when you look at an offense and then you see, hey man, they, they attack you in this way, and I'm a safety, I'm like, I play every position. I know what everybody's doing. If I know the ball's going there, coach, I'm just gonna switch with him. Another episode of Bustin' with the Boys. As always, we are your hosts, Will Compton, Taylor Lewan. A combined 18 years in the NFL, a combined three Pro Bowls amongst each other, a combined one combined invite amongst each other. We bring this show brings the locker room to life with you guys. If you're watching right now, please make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. Leave comments with the boys. If you're listening on audio, Spotify, Apple, Google, whatever the case may be, again, make sure you're following. Make sure you're subscribed to the boys. In this episode, we have on the Troy Polamalu, a decorated Hall of Famer. And his conversation, we hated it. We only we only got about 30 minutes because of his because of his time frame. We hated that we had to sit with him for such such a short short amount of time. But absolute football porn, the game within the game, father talk, dad talk. We also get into the dad club in this intro. The intro is about 120 minutes long. If you want the Troy Polamalu episode or the interview itself by itself. Mitch does a fabulous job of putting those chapters in the YouTube so that way you can fast forward or skip ahead if you want to. But if you're a tier one, where you should be a tier one, follow along busting with the boys. Our intro, we talk about the combine. We get into the uh, Antonio Brown barstool drama. We're going to Miami this week for UFC 299. We have a great twisted question by Mitch. Uh, shout out, no free shout out. And we talk dad club. We talk, we vent a little bit. We tell some stories. We talk shop. You're going to love the episode. We have a lot of ad reads in this episode, so we apologize ahead of time. People love to advertise to the boys. Bear with us. You're going to love the episode. Without further ado, here is the intro of Bustin' with the Boys, and then Troy Palomalu. Big hugs, tiny kisses. All righty then. What episode are we at? 265? 266. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Bustin' with the Boys. Before we get started, oh, Will Compton's back. Let's give him a round of applause here. Willie C is in the building. And uh, how'd you get here today, Will? The Chevy, the Chevy Silverado, mm. specifically the ZR2 Chevy Silverado. Yeah. But we're not here to talk about the uh, ZR2. We're here to talk about the Super Cruise. Ooh. The Super Cruise has this Silverado truck tech. It is the only Super Cruise that lets you drive hands-free and tow hands-free on more than 400,000 miles of compatible roads. With over 138 million miles of hands-free driving, by customers. The Super Cruise will help you get to your adventure energized and it'll help you drive home. Uh, go to Chevy.com where you can check out the Silverado, build your own Silverado online and learn more important details about the Super Cruise. Cause we talk a lot about the ZR2 family. Now it's time to get you guys mesmerized by the Super Cruise mm -hmm. from the Chevy Silverado. Yeah. Uh, the Super Cruise, just so people know, is a is new tech that is getting updated in Chevy Silverados, I believe. So mm -hmm. in the brand new ones, they will have the, so all of the Chevy Silverados coming out in 2024 so, will have Super Cruise. Mine won't get a Super Cruise? No. I, don't, I, think, I think yours since yours is last year's edition. It doesn't uh, have it, but when you get your your updated one, when Chevy ooh. sends you a brand new, yeah, yeah, Super yeah. Cruise activated. That's what we need. That's what we do need, especially me. I was in my, uh, I was being driven to the combine yesterday and uh, I did not set it up. The NFL set it up and I got in the vehicle and I'll just say this, it wasn't a Chevy. So I'm white knuckling it the whole time I'm on my way there because I don't feel as safe as I could possibly feel. Take a picture, me and my boy Ishmael were on the drive. I had a buddy from high school, hits me up and he's like, nice to see you in one of XYZ car. And he sends me a picture of his non-Chevy in there. And I was like, brother, you're gonna have a family soon. I suggest you do the right thing. Keep your family safe. Go trade that POS and, and get you a Chevy Silverado, specifically the ZR2. And until then, I'm going to delete your number and don't ever contact right. me. Right. Don't contact me again. Trust me, we're not boys right now. Yeah. If you're wondering if we're good or not, let me answer that question for you. We're not good. Yeah. That's not how we're going to do it. But yeah, dude, Combine yesterday. Combine the entire week last week was pretty impressive. We The, the Combine 40 record was broken by Worthy. The wide receiver from Texas. Get, get what you need in there. Yeah, yeah, I need to get that. Get that little swirl. Yeah, I get the boys the starting to get yeah, separated, yeah, huh? Yeah, I got to get it back together. Um, can we pull that little clip up real quick? Can we pull that clip up of Worthy? 
and just watch running the the a master at work. Yes, four two one, I believe, was his official time. That is so crazy. That's nuts, dude. And there's fast, and then there's track fast. This man, Xavier Worthy, is track fast, and he knew what he was gonna do too. Everyone knew, even his boys from Texas were like, "Just watch you. Walk. We'll just wait till X runs." <gasps> The best part is when the crowd erupted. I know. 16,000 people were in that stadium to watch. Is today the first year that they did that? Where they let uh, fans and and people attend? They did it last year, too. So I was obviously there with the offensive line were there. We'll just say it was went from 16,000 to 1,600 people. Like, it was very... 1,600 to 16,000? No, it went from 16,000 watching the wide receivers to 1,600 watching the offensive linemen. Oh. The offensive linemen now go last. Yeah, 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 yeah. But... The hogs, man. The Hawks. Not a lot of love for the Hawks. Not you want to see speed. You want to see speed. You want to talk about quarterbacks, Rich Eisen, Daniel Jeremiah, those two individuals during the Hogs workout. We're talking about how great J.J. McCarthy's workout is and how he's a sleeper of the draft and how incredible that guy is going to be in the NFL. If you want a quarterback, you want to get excited about a quarterback, get excited about the offensive line as well because your quarterback's going to be nothing without a good offensive line, boys and girls. Okay? He will be absolutely I see nothing. you trying to pump the Hogs, man. I'm just saying, dude, these guys need a little bit more respect. Am I don't know. Did you watch the combine yesterday? Were you like, I watched were you the fully combine. invested? Not fully invested. Yeah. Then, no. So during, during the forties, the offensive lineman running the forties, these cats, is this the fastest one? The fastest 40 for O line was four, nine, two. Yeah. Like four, nine, two. Yeah. I think it was only five guys that were under, under five this year. But, um, at one point in the second group, I was down watching the, I was like standing right here off to the side in the, uh, in the end zone area watching these guys and there's about 10 dudes left and four or five guys it seemed like went down with hamstrings or soft tish issues mm, gotta, one dude gotta get the soft tish one dude pulled of. his hammy and then all of a sudden started limping and then his knee other knee kind of buckled so i was like i hope that didn't get way worse than it should have been which leads me to in 2014 when your boy was at the combine offensive lineman and the big boys got there first like offensive lineman defensive lineman and the injured guys got there first yeah and started working through the process and they were there for four days and on the fifth day you run I think they should go back to, even though we all know why the NFL is now putting the fast guys first, because the ratings are better and everyone's tired by Sunday. It's God days for God day for a reason. Oh yeah, this is the big boy walking. Look at that, doing his Beyonce walk. Had a sock in my piece too, making it look a little bit bigger. Do you, you need to have these guys, the big boys, run first because the soft tissue issues obviously were an issue. And then some people are even talking about getting rid of the forty for offensive linemen in general. But now it's talking about just doing a twenty. Yeah, I think that's smart. See, I don't like that. Before example A. <laughs> like a young Taylor Lewan would want to show how fast he is by running the entire 40. Yeah. But, th- but then it goes, to, it's like, uh, yeah, but if you're going to risk the hamstring injury, it's like, why would you move the old lineman to the first just so they can be preventative on the hamstring injuries? Yeah. Move- they don't bring the, they don't put the asses in the seats. They don't bring the asses in the seats, but guess what? Tomorrow and next day is open. Bring the wide receivers in the next day. But for old line, do you put the finale? Oh, 40. When you watch a fireworks show, do you watch the finale first where all the big booms are going off? Or do you like to watch a couple of, Get you warmed up a little well, bit. The fireworks show only lasts probably 30 minutes in right. one singular day, not an entire week. It's a four day. So if they, just day did, if they just did fireworks, like just four days in a row, just different sets, and they're just doing like the sparklers in the beginning, it's like no one's even going to watch that either. Yeah, but then you would tune in for what? Yeah, but you're not going to tune in anyway and just until the fireworks are going, the big ones are going off. Yeah, but if you're not going to tune in for the big guys regardless, what's wrong with putting the big guys first so that they can have the soft tissue issues worked out and then put in the real show. You could even have a pre combine hosted by the Hogs. Like, you don't, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I'm all with kind you. of the same thing. Or just take them out of the combine altogether. Yeah. Another big winner of uh, the combine, Frank Crum, dude. Hey, and not to mention, you, a fun little history fact Taylor is the fastest 40 for guys over 6'6 in history. And if the 40 gets taken away, you own that record forever for life. He's the fastest lineman over 6'6 or fastest guy over 6'6? Just in general. I think I don't ever say six. Really? Fastest. How tall was Calvin Johnson? That's that's exactly well, who he I'm, and I we were similar we were like similar comps. I'm pretty sure he was six five, no? I don't know. You can look it up. It might have been fastest offensive lineman over six six. Regardless, boys, you're Regardless. the person sitting in this chair, thank you. Holds a record in the NFL. Didn't see Joe Thomas on that list. Didn't see Joe Thomas. No. Which Joe Thomas Williams on that list? Might be guys. Might be guys just in general. Might be guys. Only be six guys five over Calvin six, Johnson? Six? Too short, Calvin. You're too little. Can't be in my Kelvin Benjamin. How tall is uh? Didn't uh, Armstead he run a fast forty? Armstead ran a four seven two. Wait, he might not be six six. He ain't. He's like six five. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. 
So I would say, yeah, just take the 40 out. I don't see why the O linemen need to run 40s. They really no. don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's as a fan, it's electric. It's fun to watch dudes run, man. Dude, it really is fun to watch literally to watch all the drills that are timed. Who's gonna be the winner? Keith Carter. Did you uh did you shake hands with Keith? Say what's up? Did you give no, him a hug? I didn't say hi to him. But there was never really like he was doing the drills, and then one time as I was kind of like going to do my next set of like the second group, he was there with a bunch of guys, and I just chose not to interrupt. Like, who am I if I'm going to talk trash about a guy to go up and be like, "Hey, Keith, how are you? Good to see you." It's like I've obviously drawn a line in the sand with Keith. Like, I'm not a fan. Yeah. And that's just kind of how that's just kind of how. It is. If he were to come to me, I would be cordial. Like, I don't have any bad blood towards Keith. Right. I would just say, in the profession that I used to be in, I would not want him as my coach. Yeah. That's all I would say. And that just is what it is. It just is what it is. There's no, there's no disrespect. Right. It is just the game. Right. We're playing. We all get graded. Yeah. It's very interesting, and in, uh, being at the combine or even at a pro day, will, where, the stresses. The wild stre- shot. I no, it's not a wild shot. I'm just trying to bring you in the it's conversation. Day, I don't want to be the guy that just talks the entire time. When you're doing your your combine or your skills, the stress level that everybody has going into the 40, then going into the broad, vertical, uh, short shuttle, three cone, all that stuff like is so high. And then being able to be 10, 11 years removed from the situation and kind of just walk out there and be chilling. Yeah. It is such a wild they're all in like this mental warfare in the moment yeah because it's like oh this is what we've trained for for the last like six to eight weeks yeah there will be ready for this one time that they think they'll this will get us drafted higher whereas in reality they're just checking off making sure you run so i tried to tell some of the michigan guys like there was a bunch of dudes it was very it was a very cool experience because after the first group finished and obviously all their their stress was off their shoulders a bunch of them i would say like 20 dudes like came up at once and were like the boys about the boys big fan of the pod uh me playing and stuff like that it was a very it was a very cool moment like one kid was like yo i used to watch you growing up in elementary school <laughs> i thought what like that's elementary sick. school yeah. that's nuts and so it, it's just cool it's cool to see those things but um those dudes are just so focused and then to be about the pot but i was talking to those guys then and they're like i'm like how'd you run and they're like you know hey five two and i'm like good dude like all you need to do in this situation is like if your 10s under a 185 or whatever the, the benchmark is and you bench over this many times like you're just checking boxes like leave the dudes that are freak athletes that are going to do the thing like that's where they're going to gain and some guys might do horrible and lose but as long as you check a box it's not going to hurt you yeah like you're good to go for him running if whether he ran a five nine or a four six one it doesn't really that doesn't really matter i think if quorum ran a four nine he'd be in big trouble four five nine oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. like a four five nine versus four six one like that ultimately doesn't matter it that that is just like wanting your ego to right like, oh i ran a four five i know speaking of egos dude um luke mccaffrey outshining his brother christian edged him out edged him out he made my all combine team did he really luke mccaffrey do you want to give out your list now yeah i uh oh weird i haven't pulled up uh cole bishop he's on the list for the all combine team you got luke mccaffrey Peyton Wilson, linebacker. Uh, Braden Fisk, the D lineman out of Florida State. Humming, humming. He ran like a 4'7". Uh, and then Frank Crum out of Wyoming. He had the mullet flowing. Those guys right now are on my uh, all-combine list. Spencer Radler, I have written down. He's kind of a maybe. It kind of depends. Um, I'll get into that, though. I'm trying to cra- crap the blog right now. No, uh, no J.J. McCarthy in that, huh? J.J. could possibly make it. So you're he's up there. He's on the short list. Yeah, it's on the it's you're making a list right now. So you just gave people a peek at what the list would That's be on your peak. blog that is coming out. Yeah. And then I'm That's assuming this peak. week. Yeah. It'll come out yeah. this week. Today, which is Tuesday. Wow. That's exciting stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, JJ apparently blew everybody away in the combine. The way he was throwing the ball. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The way he, yep. yeah. Same with Spencer Rattler. Everybody was talking about how yeah. he was uh, how his footwork was. And uh, you know, because a lot of it with quarterbacks, they say it's like, you know, you're used to st- throwing to whatever particular receiver you want to. Like at Pro Day, you're going to have your guys running routes. So different receivers and different guys and not really changing up your footwork and just dropping dimes. I-, I saw some highlights of JJ. He did look good. Yeah, he was putting some zip on the ball. Uh, one of the days that you're happy that JP is not here, which is far and few between, is today because he would have only things to say about Spencer Rattler. Yeah, you know, JP is like everything is going exactly according to what he said. Yeah. I wonder if... Which right now, he's, his stock is rising. Right. Spencer Rattler's stock is rising. One guy that this is up for you know everybody else to interpret, but I did not get a good vibe from Caleb Williams throughout the combine process. I know, a lot, a lot of backlash for the boy. 
he essentially came to the combine for the free gear in the interviews. Like he refused only player in combine history not to do a medical review. Only dude didn't run, didn't throw. He the his choosing not to throw was, hey, there's a lot of film on me. You can watch that in real action. Like I don't need to do that. So he essentially went there. And then I think he did one thing about sour sour gummies. Like him and some lady sat there and tried sour candy. So he's was, essentially just went there and postured on everybody. Postured on everybody. Talking. And he's he's obviously an, an extreme talent. It's incredible how talented he is, but he's got this type of like I'm better than you attitude that he's coming off as. Now, if this is not the individual he is, he's more than welcome to come on the bus and explain himself. But what I saw from the short sample size I got of watching a few interviews on him on my way to the combine was guy's very full of himself. He's got some big time yes people in his camp right now that are getting in his ear a little too much. Mm -hmm. He needs that. Uh, his dad is really. Involved. Yeah, he needs that. Who it's usually a red flag? Who's it? Marcus Aurelius always had uh, a guy behind him saying, you're just a man. Probably. Okay. So for yeah. those of you, the Roman Empire, yeah. Marcus Aurelius had a slave, actually, who was his only singular job was during his successes was to sit there behind him and whisper in his ear, you're just a man to keep him humble. Went on to being one of the greatest em yeah, you're emperors nothing special. of all time. Yeah. Caleb needs that man. Mm -hmm. He needs that guy right now to be like, hey, listen, you still, because there, there was a point where people were saying he was saying he wanted equity or a percentage of the team he goes to. Do we know if that's real? If that I was real, I don't though? know if that's real. But based on watching the interviews I did, and I, I'm not gonna sit there and be like, you wouldn't be I surprised. That. I wouldn't be surprised at that at all. Yeah. So to me, not a great look. Like this is a game where no one's bigger than the team, right? The the name on the front is more important than the name on the back type of attitude, and he is not displaying that right now. It's sometimes it's better just to fall in line. You can be different. You can go about your ways your ways differently. Everybody does eventually, but at this point in your process. Don't shoot yourself in the foot. This guy too, Joe Milton. Well, yeah. For those of you that aren't just watching the combine Tennessee with us right Cat. now, Tennessee Cat threw an absolute rocket. What was it like seventy-five yards, Jackie? Bazooka Joe, man. Bazooka. It's it, that's about, yeah. I mean, that's if you know Joe Milton for two seconds, that's his bread and butter. Is just arm ball. strength. Yeah, yeah. It's long ball. If it's he, not, it's not I don't accurate. Know how he's gonna perform in the NFL, but. Yeah, that was where he was going to come out and show for sure is just chucking one out. Yeah, you get him and Xavier Worthy on the same team, you might make some fireworks happen there. Just, hey, outrun everybody. I'm going to throw it as far as I possibly can. You guys hold up for two and a half seconds. Joe, you could see as somebody you kind of start to like a little bit more in the offseason process of the combine versus where he ver versus where he was like if you uh, run the tape with Tennessee because mm -hmm. he does have some accuracy issues. That's just subjective. That's just subjective ball from the boy. Mm -hmm. Witnessing, watching UT over the past year. Uh, another interesting note of the combine was there were... What a specimen right there. <laughs> yeah, Sam dude. Hartman, just an incredible looking individual. Yeah, he, on like slow-mo in his 40, just like, like look up. Hair bouncing. Yeah. yeah, he's just a gorgeous man he's with the hair. He's the commercials in ASAP. Yeah, he's got a head and shoulders coming up real soon. Speaking of. The I Matt Leinart of the draft, people are saying. Yeah, well, let's hope not. As far as looks and yeah, 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 I'm with that sex appeal. He's got it all. He does. He does have it all. That's Sam Hartman. Hartman. Hartford. Hartman. Hartman. He's so hot right now. <laughs> uh, our guest today, Troy Palomalu, right? Sam needs to call Troy immediately and say, "Hey, let me talk to Head and Shoulders. Let me get on that, those commercials." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I need to. Yeah, start great, doing. great head of hair. What a but yeah, dime. like and going off of your Caleb Williams stuff too. It's like uh, and look, everybody. The way it trends now in the combine, guys opt out, they don't participate a whole lot, which is fine. Like, you totally get that there, if anything, there's risk to injury. Like, a better 40 time doesn't make or break you. So, why do all that stuff? But as far as opting out of medical stuff and the interview process, like, that is the one time of the year where literally all 32 teams, GMs, front offices, coaches, everybody is in one building. So, to me, it's like you want to, you want to show that competitive spirit in front of those guys. Yeah. Whether or not you're out there on the field performing, like that could be whatever. Like, yeah, you might be the number one overall pick in the draft. But as far as checking the boxes for medical, shaking hands, like doing all the things and kind of looking like that competitor, not only a competitor, but showing off like, you know, your leadership intangibles. Right. You don't want to, you don't want to give off the, the vibe of like, this is a massive me guy. And this could be a huge risk taking him this high. Yeah. Cause it, before the season even started, it really turned into, this is, what Caleb Williams is year. He's the number one overall pick. He should maybe sit out this final year and be done. And then USC started to lose. They were, they were contenders at first. They started yeah. to lose. He's found crying. He's doing press conferences saying, I just want to hug my dog and eat some Skittles or some bullshit like that. Then it's all, he wants the equity in the company. And so this year has not been a great year 
for Caleb Williams. As far as from a uh, an opportunity to know that this guy should be the one overall pick, having the magnifying glass on him, and people now picking him apart for a lot of reasons, like we are on the show right now. So it might not be fair criticism. This is just how it came off to me personally, is that this guy's coming off as an eye guy. Yeah. But back to Sam, dude. Let's talk about Sam and his beautiful hair, because I know there's one place he probably goes to get his hair done. At I that actually place. heard that, yeah, they, this is where he goes he, to get his hair done. He goes to Sport Clips haircuts, dude. Your hair may grow fast, but after going to Sport Clips haircuts, it, you, you'll you wish it grew even faster. That's because Sport Clips has the best seats in hair, and that may or may not be because they happen to be right in front of TVs playing sports every day. We know watching sports while getting your hair cut sure beats watching a reflection while getting a haircut, which is why Sport Clips every day is clippers and curveballs, high tops and Hail Marys, and even waves and wickets, if you're into that kind of thing. At Sport Clips, you can check in with the pros in men's hair and totally check out with pure, uninterrupted relaxation. So yeah, come watch endless streams of sports on TV while getting an awesome haircut. Sport Clips, it's a game changer. Sam Hartman. Appreciate you asking us to read that read. Did you uh, did you happen to see all the Antonio Brown tweets over the weekend? I didn't. Yeah, so he he tweeted. Um, he actually had a funny tweet where he got he got after Dave Portnoy. He's like Dave Portnoy and his minions uh, defending Tom Brady. Hashtag CTESPN, which is pretty funny. Like a well done AI photograph of like crackers sitting at a saltine cracker sitting at a computer sitting at computers writing blogs. Well, I need to because see that. essentially. Um, Damn, I don't want to butcher his name, but somebody wrote about the dynasty in, in defending essentially Tom Brady. So I guess AB comes this across the blog that came out of Barstool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that somebody's just like funny. talking about Tom Brady. And I guess AB sees it. And then all, I guess uh, just assumes here's Dave Portnoy and his minions at, at CTESPN uh, defending Tom Brady, which is hilarious. But there's also a, a really funny part of me that believes that, uh, AB doesn't know that there's a difference between Barstool and ESPN. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just to him, media is all media. Regardless of whether he knows that or not, it's a hilarious move to put CTE in there when everybody has come at AB for CTE. Yeah. And now he's essentially reversing everything on a guy who's openly said he's never been punched in the face, even though he deserves to be punched in the face. Yeah. Dave Portnoy's never had head traumas in his entire life. Right. Right. And he's using CTE ESPN, which is also funny because ESPN. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it's hilarious. And he was on one just over the weekend because obviously you wake up the stoolies and wake up the barstool crowd, so he would also feed into it. And you know, uh, AB, he's big on the whole. The uh, oh, he came at Caitlin Clark yeah, too. Congrats to Caitlin Clark on becoming an all-time leading scorer. Um, that is yeah, so. It funny seems like AB's transition is not going the greatest. I don't know. It could be. To I me, mean, in my opinion, like if you if you're coming out, obviously there's some funny stuff, but yeah being uh this uh being verbally on offense like this in a negative hate way like he came at shannon sharp like to me if, if everything is going well outside of the game that you transitioned out of and chose to just transition out of if everything is going well you'll see a good balance if that is your style like you'll see that okay he's doing solid yeah. but nothing that comes out with a b is ever that positive Right. Any headline that comes out, it's always him in trouble, not paying something, not paying some bill, fucking somebody over. Yeah, he's in Dubai throwing his piece around, yeah. which might have been a positive for him because he had a Drake piece. Yeah, a massive piece. Oh, he, he, yeah, he's just, he's like in a public pool. Drake, yeah, yeah he's just at his, it seemed like probably on his private jet. I wasn't looking too closely, but it seemed like yeah. he was on his private jet. It was definitely his private jet. Room. I'll tell you right now, it was a private jet. <laughs> I looked very close. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So did Dave respond? Uh, oh, yeah, he said funny is funny yeah. because that was hilarious. I mean, the saltine crackers. It's a great boys. response, too, by Dave. Like, because if you get got like that, that's a good got. Yeah. And it's kind of like if you had the first shot and it's that good, there's really no coming back from it unless you have that absolute haymaker in your yeah. back pocket. Yeah. So to just accept that that's a funny joke is even more right. hilarious. Right. No, I like that. That's funny. AB, yeah, dude, he just, he is like Yeezy. Without the genius, you know, easy without the genius. Like you watch the way Kanye West operates, and even with the anti-Semitic stuff and some of the crazy shit he said, people still look at him and have clips about, you know, what's this, what's that song that starts ding, ding, Runaway ding. by Kanye. Yes, that song. Like there's people still to like guys breaking down how they came up with that and how his work ethic was and how he's such a genius when it comes to hearing things musically, like. Even with all the bad shit, AB just has the bad shit. 
yeah. and thinks he's a rapper. Right. Because uh, did you see Kanye West's Super Bowl commercial? Shot on an iPhone. And it's him not even saying things clear, like go to Yeezy.com, Y-E-E-Z-Y.com. Spent $7 million on that 30 second He's commercial. He's so fuck you money. You know what you made off this? How much? $21 million. No shit. $21 million because he decided to go and do this. He's in the back of a car and it was, looks like a parking garage. No, 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 that's outside. He's just in a really cool truck. Uh, so with Yeezy, it was like a designer brand to start, obviously, and it was very expensive clothing. And then they made all the pieces twenty dollars. So then they sold twenty million dollars worth of units or whatever stock because they dropped Nuts. everything. But yeah, that you gotta love an iPhone video, Super Bowl commercial. Super Bowl people put millions and millions of dollars into their commercials and then pay the seven million dollars. He like that's a genius fucking move to do that. Yeah, that is incredibly kind of smart. Move. It's a Kanye move. Yeah. Is he the only person that can do it? I don't know. Bustin' with, bustin with the Boys there. might do it in a few years. Yeah. I need you to go. I need you to subscribe to Bustin' with the Boys. Please. <laughs> Yeezy, save us. All of our merch. St. Patty's Day's coming. Go yeah. buy it up. I did see $7 yours. $7 million. I saw your little plug on Instagram. I just did 80 minutes in the sauna, 250 degrees. Shout out Redwood Sauna. Uh, look, two weeks until St. Patty's Day. Two weeks until you get that kiss from that lucky lady. Buy the merch that sets you up for success. Kiss me, I'm a boy for the fucking boys. I mean, the, the, the eagle ripping the, ripping the twisted tee, the tie dye. Stack up on it, boys. May the luck forever be in your favor. Redwood Sauna, fucking uh, Huberman, man. Just basically come near death. Pass out, lay in there for 20. Alarm goes off. You're good to go. Shop now. Hit the link. Yeah. 200 and how many degrees in the, in the Redwood Sauna? 280. For 80 minutes straight? Yeah. Why'd you do that? Is that a protocol that I don't know about? Are you being serious right now, dude? I want you to tell the truth. Just tell me how you did it for that long. I don't need to tell the truth. If you watch the video, then you know that I'm joking. CT. Literally, in the beginning, I had warning. Do not take this sauna protocol seriously or something like that. Then the next slide, the next slide said, again, please do not take oh, this yeah, I just saw that. sauna protocol I seriously. I turned it on. And then and it says, like, but oh. everything else is true. And it's me shouting out like, hey... Kiss me, I'm a boy. Go yeah, get yeah, our yeah. I uh, saw that Betty part. I, saw that I didn't read. I didn't read the. I didn't read the warning. I was the kid that watched Jackass shows, and when Johnny Knoxville was doing the readover of Warning, please do not perform these stunts. I didn't listen. Hey, come on, man. God damn it! 280 degrees, 80 minutes. Yeah, I was like, oh my god. You're dead. <laughs> You're dead. You're, You're dead. dead. I thought my boy is a superhuman for a second. <laughs> oh, I no. thought you were superhuman. Will I thought you were a Superman. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, probably. You're probably saying like, "Oh my god, how in the fuck he's he's got to be lying, I right?" Te I should have texted you before because I really thought in my head like, <laughs> "I don't know about is that a protocol I got to start doing." I literally, thought to myself, "I might do that tomorrow." Oh, thank God we had this conversation. I'd be oh, dead. Oh, I know. Yeah, you you're like, "Well, I'm gonna fucking now. I gotta beat it." <laughs> you're just constantly throwing water on the heater Throw the whole time. Degrees, Eighty-one minutes. Fuck, how do I get it up to two eighty? <laughs> yeah. Just dying, burning, slowly turning into a raisin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. So thank God you saved my life there. All right, cool. <laughs> and you literally slow cook brisket at a lower temperature than that. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, I love you, brother. I love you too, man. I love you, bro. God damn. It's, it's tough to be this dumb sometimes. Hey, but guess what? We're going to Miami this week. Hell yeah, we are. Miami, Miami. For those of you going, oh, the boys are going to South Beach. Yeah, we're going to fucking South Beach, dude. Uh, UFC 299 is upon us now. Pretty cool opportunity. That Senor Hunter has graced us with. Do you want to tell him the plan? Or you just want to let him know that something's coming out on Friday, Thursday. Uh, we can tease it. Tease it. You tease. So the boys will be in Miami starting on Wednesday. Boom, we will be that. boots on the ground at the UFC 299 press conference. The weigh-ins. We're going to be doing some fun stuff behind the scenes with the UFC. Potentially. Oh. There's some rumors out there that we might be having some conversations with the big dogs on the card. That is yet to be determined. However, then we will also be uh, at UFC 299, which I am stoked about. Yeah. 
Like everybody talks about the Miami, like going like the Miami card is usually one of the biggest cards of the year, like top four. Uh, so it'll be sick to be there, but we will be there. We'll be making some content. We'll be having some fun. All thanks to the boys at UFC, Dana Hunter. We appreciate Seems you. Like we got to run 10 miles. Uh, I, I don't know. I can't run 10 miles. I tried to explain Hunter that on the phone. I cannot. I literally, my knee won't let me run he, 10 he miles. He doesn't deviate from being like, oh, 10 miles. Yeah. And you're just like, one. It's like Max like, Crosby okay. did it. I know. In, in Dior shoes. Yeah. Which is just He's nuts. a different animal. Yeah, but you don't got to waste money like that, Max. He loves to. You know what I mean? It's designer everything. It's designer everything for him. Next up. Let's get, we'll get some new ones. Yeah. Those, I only wear them once. He was like Derrick Henry three years ago. He only wears a suit once. Right. Yeah. But yeah, Miami's going to be sick. I've only been to Miami to play. And that's it. Have you ever spent time in Miami? Oh, we not did. Not really. For uh, I mean, Barstool. When we first got with Barstool. Yeah, but that's going to say, like, Barstool. not really. <laughs> was that? Yeah, that's where we signed. But even then, like, it's not like we spent time there. Like, we're like, you're like, we're like bouncing around and stuff. Sorry, my back is fucking killing me. From Still. That, yeah, from that. That combine last week. We'll get um, that it feels like a knife is in my lower lumbar right now. My in between my L four and L. You want to massage it real quick? No. Are you sure? I just, I just, I just. Show me where I'm it hurts. With the guy next week, next Monday. I, I, I next Monday we were, we're. Oh, you're starting with a guy. I'm starting with a guy next week. Yeah. Yeah, because we have to get this correct. This there's no question. It's like every time you do an active thing, this happens. Yeah. And I need you right for beer games world championship. Oh yeah. I mean, I'll be ready there. Like, the, I'll have, again, I'll have anti inflammatories and everything else cooking. That's the problem, is I mask the pain, go as hard as fucking possible, and then I can't move. Yeah. But you're a gamer, dude. That's what you do. Yeah. That's the kind of guy you get with Will Compton. <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited for you to be my partner again. <laughs> and for those of you watching on uh, social media, we have been training for Beer Olympics. We've been training. It's good to see we actually have the number one spot right now in Flip Cup in the whole shop. We do. We, yeah. we should probably get a set in today, a couple sets in today. Yeah, no question. But yeah, Miami's going to be sick, dude. It's going to be a cool thing. I can't wait for you guys to see it. That content will be coming out very quickly. Very fast turnaround from the boys. If we happen to sit down with a couple of guys, it might be in the, you know, the main card, whatever. Rumors, rumors. Rumors, rumors. only rumors at this point. But if we happen to sit down with them, you'll get that very quickly. Look and for that content to drop on Thursday. Thursday. Look exactly. forward to drop on Thursday, and then also think about this. Hashtag draft DK partners. We'll be gambling on this a lot. We'll be getting after this one. Yeah, I mean, we'll be there in the action, smelling yeah. the sweat. Smelling the sweat. But, uh, yeah, you want to actually talk about DraftKings for a second there, buddy? Absolutely. Get in on the NBA action with DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers who deposit $5 or more can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 back in a bonus bet. What's a no sweat bet, you ask? It's just yeah. like getting an offensive board. You miss your first shot, you get another opportunity to score with a bonus bet back. What's the fucking red, man? You can probably talk about Miami instead of NBA. Cut, cut forward to this part, Mitch. You can also follow what all of your favorite Barstool personalities are betting on by joining the Barstool betting group in the social social section of the DraftKings Sportsbook app. I've actually done it. It is pretty cool. Like you get on there, you get on that, you hit the little social button and you see all the big betting groups and Barstool, uh, what, yeah, Barstool betting group is in there and you get to see what all the boys are putting in. So it kind of makes it easy. Kind of makes it like, hey, I have no clue what I'm doing, which I did last week and ended up winning some money. Uh, but just following one of the boys that are obsessed with like college basketball or the NBA. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code BUS, B-U-S. New customers can get a no sweat bet up to $1,000 if your first bet loses. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code BUS. The crown is yours. I mean, that's up to $1,000. You miss, you'll get, it. you'll get that opportunity right back. Yeah. How do you do the, the friends thing? Uh, it's like a social tab. I think we were in the right spot before. Maybe it was just the link. I think you might be right. Sorry, you're in the right spot. Oh, right here. Social betting groups. There it is. Barstool bet. Ninety-five thousand people following. It's like a social media. Yeah, you know what I mean. And you can just see, like, okay, so and so seems like Stephen Shea. He's a big data guy. He seems to have like the prop bets and the the parlays or the 
units. Hey, this is the amount of units you need to put on this game. So you can kind of just follow along and be like, all right, I'm going to rock with you. Hell yeah. Because we'll be out there for March Madness. We got to get ready to go. Like I we, know. It's going to be a big deal. It's going to be big. I think Nebraska is going to get in. Really? Yeah. That's what we're going for then. Uh, but I think Nebraska is going to get in the fucking dance. I bro. think there's a small chance that Michigan gets in too. Is there? I think they're still hung. I think they're still hung over from the from the national championship. Boys are still hung over from winning a national championship in football. The basketball team yeah. still hung over. Yeah, tough time. Yeah, this would be the first appearance Nebraska's ever had. I think in the tournament. Would you rather have? Maybe to look it up. Please fact check that. So I don't. I'm not. I know since I've known about Nebraska. Would you rather have your school win the national championship in football and nothing else, or win every other championship and be horrible at football? As a football as a football player, I want to win the football. I want to win the natty. Yeah, I'm talking about as a fan now as you're sitting here. Oh, as a fan now. Uh, unfortunately, you were incorrect, but the good news is, is you guys have made a tournament <laughs> plenty of times. <laughs> oh, oh, Nebra- oh, Nebraska's made 26 postseason. Wait, wait, wait. It says seven. I know. Uh, Seven bits to the NCAA yeah. tournament. Okay, seven. Okay, oh, 26. About to be eight. When's the most recent time? Were you guys good when you were in college? No, I don't think so. 2013? Yeah, fuck, right when I left. You were, I was, I was say, there, yeah. right? when I Yeah, my next, that next year. 2008. All right, so one time since I had known about Nebraska. But this will be massive. This will be big. We should be in Lincoln. Well, I guess the tournament's not in Lincoln. <laughs> we sound so stupid with the college <laughs> basketball. Either way, we got to get right for March Madness because we're going to Barcelona. DK Q. Partners. Yeah, hashtag DK Partners. We're going into Barcelona HQ in Chicago. Yeah. We're riding with the boys. I'm going to responsibly get after it those yeah. two days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What Vibes days are those? Up. Like March 19th through 22nd or something like that. 19th through 22nd. It's, that, it's like that week. Yeah, Jackie, we got to go to Vegas the 21st. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Back you, the- aren't you just doing like a family trip in Vegas? Yeah, but I turned it into a, a gambling. Um, I got to work too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. For, so. First round, March 21st to the 22nd of the NCAA tournament. And then second round, 23rd to the 24th, Sweet 16, 28th and 29th. Let's go. And so on and so forth. Yeah, I'm excited. Pop my uh, cherry. With March Madness in, in the gambling. It's going to be a fun time, man. Are we going to make a bracket and like throughout the shop and then there should be like a punishment or and, like a winner? Yeah, that's probably as likely as our white elephant. No, that one's easy though because we'll just print it off and all you have to do is just literally fill it out and then you turn it in like an assignment. Yeah, we we do have to do that. We stuff. have to. I, I'll oh, take we... charge of it and I'll get the brackets. Okay, all fantasy right. football commissioner. <laughs> you did, I thought you did that. a good job until you resigned. Well, I, hey, I'll do it. I'll do it. You're going to do it? I'll do it. Okay. All right. Brackets, yeah. You, yeah, yeah. Anytime right. a bracket's in play, Willie's about it. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah. You, uh, Jack, sure you, can be, you, can be, you can be my guy right next to you. You can be my hand. Oh, your guy in the chair? Yeah, my right my yeah. right hand. That's fine with me. Yeah. I can't wait to see that fail. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's, let's get after We're in. Then. We're in. We're in. It'll get done right after this. Yeah. Um, speaking of other things that have gotten done, uh, we have restarted NCA 14 in the shop. Yeah. Right now, yeah. it's one-to-one. Me versus yeah. Will. We both have victories uh, at our opponents' stadiums, but you just dummy though. You figured out how to play the game in the second game. Yeah, I started. To, I started to get a little you more. To remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because man, there'd be times I'm like, God damn it, how do I, how do I stop that? And then I'm just like trying to dabble with all the different like play calls, and then I'm like, okay, this is what I used to do. This is what I used to do. So. I got a little settled in. Comfortable? Yeah, I got a little settled in. See, offense, I feel very comfortable. I'm like, okay, run the ball, use your play action. Like, I'm, re- I legitimately think to myself, you know what you're doing on this end. Yeah. When defense hit, I just kind of become the defensive end and like <laughs> run into the tackle because <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to pick. I don't know how do you pick. Is it why? Why defense is also impossible in that. Game. No, Will had four picks on me last game, and two of them are users. Well, yeah, if you if you user, user if you user, user if you user the entire time, you're gonna have Showering. a better. Like We've got to stream that. It's so much fun. Y'all don't want to play me. That's all I'm saying. All right, we'll, we'll get some stuff going. Well, you can't. Who do you play you gotta, with? You gotta... huh? Who do you play with? I'll play with anybody. All right. You can be Akron. You would have to play with Ohio State, yeah? I mean, That's not a school. Do you, do you want me to play with Ohio State? Yeah, play with Ohio State. Hey, Ohio State's really good. Man. I know. I know. Well, is that, that might be uh, Jones, yeah? No, it's Braxton Miller. 
In 14? Yeah. I thought he was my year. No, Braxton Miller was, uh, I think he was my year. Yeah, that, nasty. They are filthy. Braxton Miller, Carlos Hyde. It's, was Tennessee good then, Jack? Well, 2013, 14? Yeah, no. 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 Tough sled for Jack. That was, are you, that was, you that was my cat? freshman year of college, and it was hell on earth. The Butch Jones, that was the start of the Butch Jones era. Recruiting, we were the best in the country. Actually playing ball, it was a dumpster fire. But yeah, I love NCAA. All right. This will, yeah, it'll be fun. Five, but yeah, I think 14 is the best NCAA there's been. That's yeah. the one. Without a doubt, it's number one. We should also make a little dynasty too. Yeah. That's and fun. create a player that we just have a community guy. My brother in law yeah, had 32 yeah, yeah, yeah. guys in a Madden franchise and they played for like a decade where like you literally it's play so out an awesome. entire season and it's like by the week. So each week you play one singular game against one guy. In like of thirty two teams, so because then you got to do all the front office stuff oh, up yeah. until the next week. It's awesome. So we should definitely invest in some kind of franchise mode because we got to get ready for college football twenty five. And not to mention, little birdie told me we might be in the game. Are you fucking serious? Like ultimate team, like on in the ultimate team. Oh yeah, you've will. I'm. Well, I mean, yeah, college. Hey, listen now, your boy was an eighty nine, I believe. I think I, I honestly impact think, player. I, I honestly think Will was higher rated than me in the game. Uh, I thought you were in the ninety, like low ninety. Ninety two. You we found we, we found Actually, out. I don't know what I was. I think I was legit in ninety uh, eighty seven. We found out you were a team captain though. Yeah, I could have told you that. But like you went out for the like the t- coin toss. I know, but I could have told you, hey, my senior year I was a captain. Well, I know that, but like And I had kidding. a lot of votes my cool. junior year as well. If you're wondering. But back to that, yeah, I think we're gonna be in it. Who told you that? My boy. Whisper it. Blake. Lawrence from Open Doors. Yeah, got you. Because they do a lot of work with the NCAA. Oh, which by the way, this would actually be some knowledge that we're aware of. Uh, so the NCAA, you know how they're giving all the kids like six hundred bucks on a free game, and that was like a big like viral. Everybody kind of shitting on it, talking about it. Well, there's like I would take that. There's like a lot of high end, like probably the top one hundred guys. Like they're getting really good deals. Like they're they're becoming like ambassadors of the game. So guys are getting paid. It's just not all. Your guys, like if you're the bottom on the like depth chart, you're still getting your 600 in the free game, opting in. But ultimately, like all the big dogs are going to be like ambassadors and getting like well paid. More pay, pay than yeah. that. I think the entry fee is 600 dollars, and or the entry get is 600 dollars in the yeah. free game. Yeah, and ultimately, nobody like say you're a cat who say middle of the road and you like opt out because you feel like you should get more money. Like the fans don't give a shit. Like you, you would like we we love the game and it's just a. Hey, uh, uh, left tackle number seventy seven. Yeah, you know what I mean. You just know who they are. Like you no one's know, gonna care. Yeah, exactly. If you opt in or out, like all you need is probably not even need, but it's cool. Yeah. Really, you don't need anybody to be in it. But it's cool if you got like their names going in it. But if you opt out, like no one cares. No one gives a shit if you opt. Yeah, out. no one gives a the shit. The thing too is like back w- back in our day, when you got the game, knowing that you were in the game, whether your name was on the back or not, was the coolest feeling in the world. The sickest. Remember when you came in your freshman year and you're yeah. like. Like I Richard in my freshman year, so there's like, man, Same. am I gonna be in the game? Like, or am I gonna? Get... And then you see yourself down there, just sixty something, seventy, or who knows what overall you are. Four, just like that's me, dude. Two fifty four. Yeah, yep, but it's like, me. yo, I'm in the fucking in a, video you're in game. A video game right now, and now like six hundred bucks, dude. It's a terrible business thing, and I'm sure there's a bunch of people saying you can get more. Just do it, because you're gonna look back in ten years, and if you do the shit you're supposed to do, you'll make a lot of money anyway. But that is cool as fuck. Because who knows when NCAA is going to go away again. Yeah, I actually think all the kids, I don't think, I don't even know if players are, are actually bitching. I think it's just Caleb Williams lot. would. I think it's a lot of the fans out there and people just making a conversation out of nothing. Yeah, that's probably a fair point. I just think it's so cool and it's such like a, an honor. And you're, <laughs> you're, yeah, and you're honor. like, you get to be part of the, the comeback of college football, the video game. College football yeah. 25, is, that's what they're calling it, right? College football 20, yeah, right? And NCAA, NCAA, no, I don't oh, think really? NCAA, yeah. As long as the game is as simple as it was in 14. It can't be anything like Madden. It can't be. Any, Madden There's Nothing sucks. close to Madden. Madden is awful. It's not a fun game to play. My favorite thing to do in NCAA is just to create the player and, like, be a 99. Like, that's my favorite thing to do. Like, the actual playing the game, I could, you know, I have fun because we're with the boys and stuff like that, but that's, like, my bread and butter. And I tried to do that in Madden, and it was miserable. There's too much, like, technical. You have to release at a certain point, point. it's, like, that shit's lame. Just make it easy. Way t- they're trying to get way too realistic right. about it. Way too realistic. It's like this is a video game for a reason. Yeah. Just make like it fun. NFL Blitz. Like, yeah. Obviously, it's like we're just tossing the ball left and right, and dudes are throwing it and slamming guys in the ground, but it's simple and it's fun, Fast and you can pace. play it for hours. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's that's I'm the good you. part about I it. I hope now. we can do a dynasty to where all 132 teams could be accounted for. Yeah. Could run like a a league wide bus and dynasty. Like you have to play with your team, you get a fan or a player from every team to be represented. You maybe you go once a week where hey, you have to have your game in by Tuesday. And just yeah. if it's not simulate it, jump in, hey, it's getting simulated, league wide email or something, who knows? See, that'd be sweet, except for I, that's something that, that I would so buy into sweet. for four or five weeks, and then I would slowly peter off and not do well. This is the first year I took fantasy football seriously, and that was a struggle for me. Yeah. Champion, but still a struggle. Asterisk. Asterisk, no asterisk. No asterisk. I have, a, I have the crown. <laughs> asterisk, no asterisk. All you guys are just losers whining. But either way, the show goes on, even if you fizzled out. And then the next year, we'd just have to cut you. Yeah. It'd be like, hey, we need somebody to come in for, uh, to represent Michigan. Yep. Blake Horm. You love Blake. <laughs> you really do, do love Blake like, so much. I like I like him a lot, man. I hope he fucking crushes it. I hope he does too. I hope he goes to JJ the is JJ too. Like, yeah. Just I mean, all those guys. boys are good dudes. There was I don't was there any and you can just say yes, I won't ask your name, but was there was there any guy guy in Michigan that we were around? You're like, I have a bad feeling about this guy. No, I mean, no, but also that one, that kid, one cat who yeah. jumped in the bushes, who was a, uh, yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. who was just a maniac. He was yeah. the pass rusher, the DN. Yeah, you don't like I said, we don't gotta say the names. <laughs> But yeah, number 17. But that's not like a, I don't mess with him. That's like a, oh, hopefully everything, yeah. he stays on the street. What you, what you saw that night was me. That was like two, like no joke, two a T. I was like, I, I was looking as I was walking and watching him sprint by me and jump into a bush. I was like, just a young Taylor Lewan. Hopefully he finds his tailing. Hopefully he finds his tailing. You know what I mean? That is, uh, that's all. That's the only Hopefully thing that can save he finds him. the right people. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Hopefully he gets a nice therapist. <laughs> yeah. He figures that out. Yeah. Talk to you. Listen, brother, we'll get the mommy daddy issues out of the way in a little bit. You won't be all right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, I, I would love, I'm really going to buy in a, in, uh, college football 25. I really am. I'm, I'm excited for that. That's, it's going to be such a fun time. Should uh, we go in the shout out? No free shout out since we're on the positive vibes right now. Yeah, I can, I'll, I'll do that. Absolutely. Start off, start us off, Mitch. Let's see if I have any <clears throat> All right. My shout out, no free shout out Whoa. this week, uh, kind of. It stays in the sports world, but this past weekend and like kind of like Thursday and Friday, there's this one dude on the New York Rangers. He's this young cat. And he is just fighting everybody. Oh, I saw on every team who's like just known as being the fighters. And I think it is so sick that in the NHL you can just square up with somebody and be like, All right, we're doing this. And like they're just so electric. So my shout out, no free shout out, goes to the ability to fight in the NHL. All right, it's a good little shout out because that is sick that they get to do that. It's a cool thing too because the NHL is like a gentleman's game, like the way everyone operates. There's like rules within the rules that people have to follow and stuff like that. And to be able to settle a dispute that way is so cool to me. I did, I did have a tweet one time that was like I think it was like 2016, 17. I was like, we they should let NFL players do that, knowing good and well that's a terrible idea. But that, well, I think it's a bad decision on the players' part because the thing about NHL is you everybody plays, so you get breaks. Yeah. Like, no matter what, you get breaks. Like, say you're in the middle of a drive and you just start squaring up and it's fourth quarter, like, you're exhausting yourself. Like, why even? Right, but it also it's also different because hockey, there's times and places to get in a fight. Like, you don't, if it's the fourth quarter or the third period, close game, two-to-one type of situation, there's no fighting, even if the, one of the worst things happen. Because you just, you know what's at stake is the winner, the, the winner loss column. So, like, if it's first quarter, you're down by one, you need the boys to get some juice, hey, comp, go in there, take out 23. So, yeah, you'd almost need a, uh, you'd almost just need a guy on the bench, coming off the bench. Yeah, to go do some it. coked like, out Hey, go, well, go in, you're going to go in for a couple plays. Yeah. Here. Make sure it's first down, we're, they're probably going to run the ball. Right. Play smart, good eyes. If somebody fights, there's not a penalty. They're offsetting penalties. Those guys just go in the box for a little bit. So, it just goes back to first and 10. And then a bunch of guys kind of just grab each other and hold each other while these two legit square off. Yeah, but knowing that the mentality can be that, like, guys, like, you would have lost your composure. Come on now. I mean, you would have. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, but when you take your helmet off, because then you're just, people are breaking hands really easily. Well, there's, a, there's an art. There's an art to fighting with helmets on. Right. It's a, you have to grab the face mask, turn it, and then it's throat. It's chin. It's throat. That's what you got to do. If you go punch somebody in the helmet, you're, you're new at this and you're just going to hurt yourself more than the other person. But there's a quick little, that's a little move there that for those of you who want to get in a football fight, 
That one's free. Aaron Donald just rips the helmet off and beats, beats you with it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Same with Miles Garrett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. Well, he uses them as legit weapons. <laughs> so you're trying to get into it. And I think in there. hockey, hockey guys go, they get in their scrums or whatever, and they move on. In football, if you get in a fight, that I think that's not over. Whoever lost, it's not over for them ever. Yeah. They're hunting you down. Trent Williams grabbed you, man. It's over. <laughs> But I would like I, I wouldn't even really shit talk a whole lot just because I'm trying to conserve my energy, get to the next play. I know, I hate that. I hated that about people. Ben Jones would do the same thing. And he like, would, I would love to like if you're like bantering about jokes or something, but yeah, I was never getting too loud because again, you gotta conserve the energy. Ben yeah, Ben was a, the stamina. Ben would spend just as much energy as I would talking shit, buttering the guy up in front of him. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, you're doing great. Hey, like he'd pick it, he'd be like, oh, you tripped, you got a foot, you got yeah. a foot there. Yeah. And I hated that. I thought that was so lame. <laughs> like, Ben, fucking stop. Yeah. And then Ben, I, there was like a couple times where I would talk shit to like the nose tackle and Ben would literally come over to me and grab my face mask and be like, you talk to whoever you want, leave him alone. Yeah. Ben, Taylor, you leave him alone. Darren, <laughs> Darren Sproles went out to the flat one time. We were playing the Eagles and he was like, man, he should have just threw it out here to me. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm so happy he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Did he say anything? He just chuckled and I was like, you're a hell of a player. And then I just tried to, I just tried to back the huddle. Because I don't need, you know what I mean? I need guys to think issues. like, oh, this is, this, uh, you know, you you let your guard down a little bit. Yeah. You lower your level of play for just a minute. Yeah. That's all I need. Oh, this guy's a good guy. I'm not going to do him dirty. Yeah, yeah. That is funny how that legitimately happens in the league too. Like dudes literally think themselves, oh, this cop. I'm not going to do him dirty. I'll let him get this angle. Yeah. I remember one time it was like uh, one of the last two years. And I, I went down and somebody apologized. Oh, my bad comp. I didn't mean to do that. I go, it's all good, brother. Just help me up. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, brother. Just get going. Give me one of them. Yeah. Yeah. I hated the help up thing too. I, I never did. Never helped up an opponent once in my entire career. I don't know if I did opponents. I mean, I, it's like if somebody's down and I'm helping guys up maybe, but there wasn't like a, there wasn't like a style of like, oh, I'm going to leave this guy on the ground. I just wouldn't reach for somebody's hand if they reached out. And I had a thing about getting up too, but Derek would always, if it was the first run of the game or the 40th run of the game, just put both of his hands up. And if you were starting to walk by, he'd yell at you. <laughs> like, oh, God damn. And he wouldn't help at all. You know, when he helps hey, somebody bro, up, you're massive. They, like, put their body into yeah, it. Yeah. Derek would zero percent. He just like let you like bring him back up <laughs> to life like Frankenstein. It was the worst. It was the worst. Jack, shout out. Um, my shout out never shout out goes to Jewish weddings. I attended my first Ooh, one nice. this weekend, nice. and um, if you've never been to one, I highly recommend They're them. electric. They are electric, and there's just like a lot of cool cultural symbolism that they include and like a lot of history, but I remember we get in there, and most weddings that I've been to before, you know, they do the first dance, you eat, and then everybody just basically dances for the rest of the time. We, like, everybody sat down, they do uh, dances and speeches. And then everyone gets up, and for 45 minutes, it was just like everyone holding hands, spinning in the circle. We're hoisting the people in the chairs. And it was just all time. Like, the energy was everywhere. Everyone's having a blast, just hugging and kissing. So shout out that, and also shout out to my great friends, um, Alex and Will Godwin, who just got married. So had a great time there. But, yeah, if you ever get the chance to go to a Jewish wedding, do not pass up on it. It will change your life. Let's go. I might be Jewish now, so I don't know. Hell yeah. Delaney did that. Delaney did that one year. Really? The yeah. reason they're ahead of the game and they have electric weddings, in my opinion, they have an agenda. Like you, they have traditional things that they do. So no matter what, you, you know what to be excited for. Yeah. Like if you go, you know, to a different wedding, you're, if you're getting married, almost plan things within, you know, the reception and everything else. Just because it's like, Outside of that, it's like, okay, who's going to go out there on the dance floor first? Yeah. Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? Yeah, they're like, you know up, what's coming next. Stand up and come dance. Like, everybody get up. Like, There's even, like, 90-year-old grandmothers, like, up, like, spinning and dancing. Yeah. Like, if she's doing it, you're doing it. Yeah. Get question. Up. Yeah. No, it's amazing. I love, I love the awkward Christian wedding when it's, like, music starts uh, and there's, like, two or three people are like, do we? Like um, I, I think it's the first couple. one in there. Just start fucking. Just doing whatever, <laughs> Just start man. moving. Getting out there. Yeah, that's uh, the worst. So great wedding. The worst wedding is Catholic weddings. The worst, dude. It's the first off, it's a leg workout. You're up and down 50 times. They're washing feet over there. And it's literally a, a, a straight communion. They, it's like an hour and a half. A lot of weird traditional stuff. Weird traditional stuff. 
weird. Well, I mean, a long time. weird, like, not weird. You're, whatever you're into, weird, you're into. You know, yeah. Well, I'm saying weird. I agreed and through yeah, it and yeah. then a process. I was like, listen, we're not against the Catholics. Weird, here. like, it's like you have to go through an entire, uh, uh, like, mass. You have to go through an entire service. Yes. Everything is very structured in a way of, like, school. Yeah, and by the time it's the, the reception happens and it's time to have fun, you're just tired from the thing. Yeah. I spent an hour and a half. Like, I, I, let me get some bread or a salad in me before I start going crazy. Right. All right, let's play bingo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to buy the 50-50 raffle for the quilt. For the quilt. I used to sell. You know what? Boy used to deal raffle tickets for quilts back in the day. The, uh, the feet washing the thing. I never, I never understood that. I was at a wedding one time, and they started washing their feet. And I was like, I know this is a religious thing, but I just didn't get it. Yeah. They're washing feet? Yeah, 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 I'm sure there's somebody in the comments that can tell us what that means. Yeah. I think it's like your service. Yeah, it's your yeah, yeah service. service for the Jesus. other individual. He'd wash their feet. Great, love him. What a guy. <laughs> <laughs> My shout out, no free shout out. Good, good pivot. Sharing the Wi-Fi password. So when you're at a spot and you, you're trying to get into the Wi-Fi and it just pops up on somebody else's phone. They're like, oh, hey, who's trying to get on the Wi-Fi? And you're like, oh, myself. And they're like, oh, I'll share it with you right now. And then, boom, you're in, you're into the Wi-Fi. I think that's a very small victory uh, for the iPhone. Is share being able to share the Wi-Fi password. So that is my simple, yet effective shout out. No free shout out. I like that. There's power too in being on the opposite end of that, where you share it to someone else. You're like, you know what? <sighs> yeah, here you go. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bing, send it off. Uh, my shout out, no free shout out came to me yesterday. I had a uh, dinner with Dennis Kelly after the combine and, uh, I was, my whole approach to the dinner was try to get him back to move back to Nashville. And he's like, Oh, Will's not doing it for you. And I was like, no, you know, Will's great, but you know, we're together every single day. I'd love to have you around. I'd love to have an outlet every once in a while. And it got me thinking to the fall, how, like when we're in this building every single day that I know how I am, I know how I can be and to see the little like the more you know somebody the more you can find out how annoyed they get quickly and with will it's very easy to see for as long as we've been friends so towards the end of the season it was like oh yeah okay will's he needs a break from old louie and so my shout out no free shout out goes to the perfect amount of break you get from friends when you need this to recharge that button and get back to neutral well hang on what are what are my what are my ticks you just you get you you internalize you get uh quiet faster jokes you're not as jokey it's not a bad thing. It's just like, oh, my boy, he just needs to recharge his batteries. It's all good. I know. It's human I'm, nature. I'm like, curious. I'm trying to learn yeah. about myself. Um, what else does he do? You guys can jump in at any point, but it's really like... This is you. It's an overall... Yeah, it's fine. It's an overall energy thing with Will that's just kind of like, okay, he's not feeling it today. Okay, he's he's feeling the weight. It's, it's November, and we're not even in December yet type of halfway through the season, just like how people get during the football season. When you get to like, like the second week in November, and you're like, shit, it's not even Thanksgiving yet. We still got half this motherfucker yeah, yeah, yeah. left. So you just see it, you see it in the eyes. Look, boy. <laughs> good to see you. Make a joke and you're like, mm. like, okay, he's not having a good time right now. And that's okay. You guys can tell? I think that's just natural for anyone. Like, yeah, for yeah, anybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. One, you, like, sure we were all feeling that. you need yes. time to like miss somebody and be like, remember why you want to spend time with them. And, and just being like, ah, you really are getting under my skin. I don't want to see you ever again. You know what I mean? Everyone feels that way. No question. Like we're we're legit brothers. So there's sure. gonna there's gonna become a sure. point where you're like, listen, I need 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. Because you would you would get anytime there would be like a small break, like Will would go to Chicago and I wouldn't go. That Friday it was like it seemed like the batteries were recharged a little bit. But you go you go Monday busting two bet the bus. Wednesday slip some picks. Thursday we're both in Chicago. Friday we're go we're off to this fall tour break. Sunday. Monday, we're back at it. It's like well, a couple of those go down, and I can just see Will being like Saturday, late. Michigan wins, Nebraska loses. Yes, <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> and so that's when you just see it. And Will is like, yeah, he's <laughs> he's kind of over it, isn't he? <laughs> so that's my shout out for shout out, dude. Recharging the batteries. Recharging the batteries. You gotta man. have I love it, that. dude. You gotta, you gotta recharge it. Should we go? Uh, should we talk pet peeve? Do we want to go twisted question? Yeah, I kind of want to. Do we have dad hats? Because I'd love to hit a dad segment real quick. It can be my dad story. This yeah. this could funnel into the pet peeve. I'm gonna put this on real quick. Now listen, this new segment for those of you stored up barstoolsports.com, you can get this merch. Um, brought the segment up what over a month ago. Yeah, and this is the first time we're doing it. <laughs> so this is for all the dads out there, young kids, old kids, everything in between. This is this is a therapeutic session for all of us. Like 
this can be a positive thing or it could be a negative thing. Today, for me, as a father, this is going to be a negative thing that just pisses me the fuck off. Get it off your chest, man. I appreciate that. My six-year-old is incredible. Win Rebel Lawan. She's so sweet. She's so kind. Like, truly the epitome of a little girl. Unicorns, butterflies, rainbows. Loves all that stuff. I love it. Barrier. I hate the fucking whining voice. The daddy, Willow took my bunny, and then she said that the bunny said this, and then the, and then the bunny turned away from me, and I'm thinking, dog. Did the bunny say that? When? He's like, yeah, the bunny said that. I was like, do you think you could be the bunny's voice? It's like, no, Willow's being the bunny's voice. And it's that, it's that daddy, that tone. Yeah. Willow's being the voice. It's like, well, also, okay, stuffed animal, you can be the voice if you want to be the voice too. So go ahead, be the bunny's voice. And then she goes, when? Yeah, I love you. I was like, see? Now the bunny loves you again. And then Willow, in true fashion, goes, I don't love you. And turns the bunny away. And I'm like, God damn it, Willow. Because Willow's a savage. Willow's, a, Willow's an absolute savage. Like, she just takes things and keeps moving forward. Dude. She She's is, a Rocky yeah. Balboa of our family. Was that the first time you saw her hanging upside down on the swing? Yeah. I was not <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, going off Willow being a savage, we go over to Lawan's. The Lawan's host us for like an Italian night. We had a great Italian meal cooked up by the one, the only, Taylor Lawan. And it was phenomenal. But before the meal gets made, uh, the girls are like, hey, we, let's go upstairs. So we go upstairs. I have Rue over. It's me. It's me, Rue, Willow, and Wynn. Yeah, so and Will, we're up in the Will play pulls area. up with the Bakhtiaris, and we're kind of hanging out. And then my girls grab Will and just take Will upstairs. So Will's fending for himself. Yeah, I'm, with with one, the four I'm wondering when the fellas are going to come up and look for <laughs> yeah. me or find me. Me like, and Dave when I show them the property. Will. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm up there, and we're in, like, the play area. And they're like, hey, can we go upstairs, upstairs? I'm like, oh, what's upstairs, upstairs? And they talk about like this, this basically this, this jungle gym that's up in like the attic. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I don't see why not. And they're like, well, we can only go up if an adult is with us. So I was like, okay, I'm an adult. Let's go upstairs. I'll watch you guys. So we go up there and they're playing around. There's like this, there's like this swing, but it's uh, like, it's like, what's it called? It's like, a, it is a swing. It's just a swing, but instead of like a actual sitting it's like swing, a chain and swing, it's like this big cloth that you can kind of get in and maneuver in and they can kind of lay down or sit up or whatever. Yeah. And so Wynn is like hanging upside down, has her legs like wrapped inside. So she's kind of swinging. Willow, you can tell she's fired up and wanting to do it too. She's like, I, I want to swing. I want to swing. I'm like, okay, I can help you swing. And she's like, uh, I want to do it like Wynn. I'm like, okay, have you done it before? And she's kind of like, you know, she's like, oh uh, yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> All right, well, watch your sister. I'm like, Wynn, stand over here. We kind of go through the instruction, and I'm like, lean back. The first time she does it, she's got her legs up, wrapped around, and she's swinging back and forth. She's having a blast. And I'm kind of curious, like, was this the first time she did that? It was. So I, I'm the one who's kind of enabling this and versus being like, oh, let's wait until mom or dad comes up and says you can do it. So then Taylor comes up. She's like, Dad, you got to watch me swing. And I was like, yeah, you got to check out Willow Swing. And so we go over there. And I'm like, remember, I was like, get your back here. And I was like, we're going to go backwards. We go backwards. I'm like, here, wrap your leg around here and wrap your leg around there. So she, she starts trying to wrap. I step back. As I step back, she just slips, she slips down the swing and just goes head first. Lands on her head. Yeah, lands on her head, just head first into the ground. And I kind of sit there. I was like, oh. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like knowing it's Willow. Willow like hits, hits her head like on top of her head. Yeah, kind of like. the rest of her body falls. And then she just goes. I'm okay. <laughs> but but kind of like, I'm okay. And we're kind of sitting there and I'm like, God, I hope she is okay. Cause I have no clue if this yeah. is like the first time she's been doing this. And it was, or if this has happened. It's like, Oh yeah, yeah, you're good. She's like, Oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. And I'm just thinking, Oh, thank God. Yeah. But she kind of just took it, dropped on her head and took it like a champ and just kept it moving. And Willow's really like that too. She's, she's like that. Strong head, bulldog. Strong. De yeah. And she's just kind of like eat shit, dude. Yeah. But anyway, all that to be said, my daughter, my oldest daughter is overly sensitive sometimes. And it's very difficult for me to handle that. Is there anything like you talk shit about your daughter? <laughs> so my dad's, dad's story, man. my dad's story comes uh, to us from uh, Rue. And I'm going to say this is probably a pet peeve for Rue about her old man. She loves Frozen. She's into the Frozen world now. She loves Elsa. She loves Anna. She loves Olaf. I love Frozen. It's actually a movie that I can... Right now, I'm still in the, I haven't watched it like a hundred times where I'm sick of it. So I'm still in that phase of, we got to listen to Frozen everywhere we go, the soundtrack. She, if we say, hey, it's movie night, she's like, Elsa, Elsa, Elsa. And then we got to talk her into something else. We watch something else, but she loves Frozen. 
So I'm putting her down the other night and she loves when mom and dad sing to her. And I usually have this old Mighty Joe Young song I like to sing uh, back after, you know, the poachers came and everything else. But for whatever reason, Rue is now on to she wants Frozen. So she wants Elsa. She'll say Elsa, Elsa. I don't really know the lyrics that well. So I just sing over and over like, let it go. I'm just like, let it go, let it go. And I'm not back anymore. Let it go, let it go. Na, 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 da, da. And then I'll kind of stop and, Here I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm kind of like piecing those together and I just kind of sit and rock before I like put her down for the final goodbye. And then she's like, Aya, Aya, Aya. And I, she's singing so confidently. I'm like, oh, her mother must have sang her something the night before. And uh, she's like, Aya. Little did I know that meant Anna. And uh, she wanted to hear like Anna, like uh, the front door song or something, mm. whatever it is, like open up the doors and yeah. shit. Do you want to build a snowman? That's one of them. Yeah. But she's like, Aya, Aya, I have no clue what she's saying. So I just start going, <laughs> I just start singing Aya in the Let It Go version. I just start going, Aya, Aya. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then she just immediately leans up, leans in for a kiss, and she's like, bye bye. And I go downstairs <laughs> and I tell Char about it. She starts dying laughing. She's like, she wants you to sing uh, for the first time in forever. Oh, yeah. Great song. And uh, she's laughing. She's like, she's probably sitting there like, what the fuck is dad singing right she now? Says, like, I just put me down. Just bye put bye. me to bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dog. So that is my uh, that is my dad's story. That is my dad's story of the week. I also hate the whiny voice. I hate when you, they don't get their way, and their immediate thing is to start kind of like crying or like have that kind of yeah. have that kind of face and say, "Hey, let's let's calm down." I touched on it last week. I'm kind of finding my 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 groove as like the grumpy dad sometimes, and I'm I'm perfecting it. The last week has allowed me to perfect it. You're I really know, getting there. I know dad, when though. to become grumpy, and when to hey, that finger listen yeah you don't talk to me like that you don't talk to your mom like that yeah why don't you go ahead and go do what i asked you to do and think about what you did yeah boom love that yeah love yeah that. i don't know how to mess with it sometimes i've started kind of just like if rue starts crying like for whatever reason i just start saying like yeah more louder cry louder oh that's not helpful <laughs> she'll stop crying she'll kind of she'll kind of like stop and look at me and i'm like go ahead you want to you want to cry like go ahead cry louder that's going to help the situation I'm pretty sure it's like gaslighting a young child. Oh, it is. I, think, so I, don't, stop, I don't truly know what gaslighting like, means. Do you, now, like do you want daddy to push you in the car? Yeah. All right. We can handle this a little bit yeah. better next time. I used to, when Wynn was little, when she would start crying, I would just cry also louder. <laughs> and then she'd be like, you know, what the fuck is this guy doing? Can I just like, stop some. See? Yeah. It's kind of annoying, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my kids rip, dude. Don't fucking get it twisted. I love my kids, but. Is it? Yeah. It's dad, dad, dad club right dad, now. Dad, dad, dad club. Segment. Dad club. This is all. All is fair in love and war, man. This is the dads venting. Yeah. Hopefully dads are out there watching, commenting with us, or like nudging yeah. their wife, being like, see? There was a situation at dinner Saturday night <laughs> when Rue got dropped on her head. And I was like, I looked at Taylor, I go, it's probably when she's always doing some <laughs> shit. <laughs> like kind of whispered that. And Taylor gives me this look like, yo, when is not always into shit? Like, what are you talking about? And like, give me this like gruesome look and like walked away. I thought that's a problem, man. We can't just bitch. Hey, we can't just complain. <laughs> the boys just can't complain sometimes. That's the fun of being a dad is getting with your significant other and talking a little shit. You want to talk a little shit about your kid knowing good and well, I love this kid. I would die for this kid. I would let my wife die for these kids. That, that's how much I love these kids. <laughs> but that's a Ryan Reynolds joke. I actually wouldn't let them die. But anyway, it's... I'm with you. You just, you just want to talk a little shit sometimes and like... Taylor is big on like, listen, don't let it get out of hand. I understand you're frustrated. If you need me to take tonight, I will. And it's like, no, 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 no. I just want you to bitch with me for a minute. And then we can just or move laugh on. laugh at my joke. Yeah, or laugh at the joke. You know, if Charles like, what's wrong with room? Like, she's been a little DTH. Yeah. Like that. And she might not like uh, have a little smirk or something. I'll just be thinking to myself like, I, I need a little giggle right there. Like, that yeah. was just all, yeah, that was yeah. all fun. That was all fun. That's a joke. Like, dog, just listen, smile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, laugh at my joke. Women, so you should smile more. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So bad. But yeah, sometimes you just want to bitch, dude. And if you guys are listening or watching the show and you're able to comment, go ahead and let us know your bitch. Yeah, dads. Hey, we're all in this shit together. We're in it together. We're all dude. trying to get better. You know what helps you as a dad? Drinking a twisted tea, dude. Twisted tea is a refreshing hard iced tea with real brewed take that tea edge off. To fi with five percent alcohol, full of flavor and very refreshing. Twisted tea goes down smooth, and there is no carbonation, which makes it easy to drink all day long. Twisted Tea fuels fun and celebrates extreme fandom on game day. It is the perfect alcohol slash beverage 
for game day, whether tailgating in a parking lot, watching at the bar, or watching it with friends at home. Twisted Tea is there to turn up your game day. Keep it twisted and grab a refreshing Twisted Tea today. You know what goes great with Twisted Tea? Lucy Ooh, Breakers. The mangoes? The mangoes. I'm on the mangoes right now because I don't have the espressos on me. I think we we actually did all those. Those are all. Sorry, I'm trying to, I'm working my. You're back? Yeah, I'm going. You want to get some cat cows? I'm going in and out. Yeah, yeah, trying to get some. All right, smart. Dude, so, and I know like, okay, here goes Taylor with another ad again. This is an ad, but it's also like a, a tip of the cap. So we had Lucy come in last week. It was Dave and, and Sammy. And these shout dudes. Shout out the boys. Yeah, shout out the boys. Like they came in there. Dave's like this broad shouldered, muscled out cat, like tells us a lot of power lifting. Sammy, this dude comes in, scrawnier looking cat, got a beard, wearing a, a, a like a Levi's jacket. And we're kind of talking, hanging out. We show him around the shop a little bit, kind of get their game plan. We start to get the ins and outs of Lucy and how the nicotine world lives. By the way, it's a big popularity contest. Zinn and all these other companies are owned by like big tobacco companies, essentially. So Lucy, you guys are probably, I've seen the comments. Well, they're so expensive. They're so this. All these other companies can cut margins because they, they're they funded by billions and billions and billions of dollars. Lucy is essentially a mom and pop shop with two dudes that are just trying to make their parents proud, which we found out. Dave, David, the owner, we really got to make his dad proud. If you want to have a son finally get the approval of his father, you need to buy a Lucy. But we sat in there. Uh, Dave was sitting in the uh, guest chair and then Sammy was sitting where the boys usually sit in the back on the benches and Sammy took that jacket off, bro. Boy, looks fantastic. Sleeper build. That Cooper build. You got that Cooper build, sleeper build. He took that thing off. Veins Body popping rocking. in the arm. Bicep just fucking out there, hanging out. I was like, oh, these boys get after it. And so, shout out Lucy, dude, because it was just a good time. Dude, lip pillows feel fantastic. Mm. The breakers are amazing. I'm officially an espresso guy when it comes to Lucy's. Mango is a close second. So, get them while you can. Use code BUSTIN, I believe, for a discount at Lucy.co. That's, there's not even an ad read for Lucy today, is there? There's not. And the boys are working on an anti-depression protocol that is not ba backed by science. That is, is not real, but we're going to release it anyway. Yeah, anti-depression. Mitch, so the twisted question. Uh, I, thought so, twisted, I thought that was just a twisted ad read. But uh, yeah, twisted oh, question. My fault, my fault. So this one comes from uh, Jake Knott on Instagram. Jake Knott. Appreciate you. If you could take one singular item from any fictional world and be able to use it, what would it be and why? Ooh. So we can use a fictional item or we can do a weapon, kind of whatever you guys are. Mm -hmm. Whatever you guys mm -hmm. One fictional item. What was Thanos' glove? What was it? The Infinity Stone, but it's just like a... Yeah. I had never even seen it, but that sounds like the easy low-hanging fruit. Kind of need all of the other stones in order for that to be. The you have to search the world. Oh yeah, I'm out on that. Or the universe, right? Yeah, like everything. It'd be tough. Mm -hmm. There's a couple in my head right now. Okay. Go ahead. Actually, there's three. Harry Potter's wand. Lightsaber. The ray gun from Call of Duty Zombies. Hey, that's a banger, dude. Harry Potter's wand is, is not a good one because in the first movie, you have to, the wand has to pick you. You can't just have Harry Potter's wand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to choose you. <laughs> yeah, but we're assuming it's choosing me. Oh, we're assuming that? I, I think so. I mean... The lightsaber I thought was a really good one. Lightsaber would be sick. Just have a true, authentic lightsaber. Mm. Like, hey, check this shit out. I have Darth Maul's lightsaber. Um, my first thought is uh, the heart of the ocean from the movie Moana. You seen that movie? Fun. Yeah, yeah. That'd be a good one. I like the lightsaber thing. I thought you were going to say Titanic. Oh, the heart of the ocean. <laughs> that, that diamond necklace. <laughs> I take that thing. Um. Any movie. Start uh, bringing some stuff I, up. I think what I, about first... Mar Marty McFly's car from Back to the Future? Yeah, that would be a fun one. It, that's probably my choice I, right now. I immediately Magic thought of... School Bus? Solid <laughs> one. Thor's, Solid one. I thought of Thor's hammer. Can't pick it up. But I mean, 
We're assuming you can. My my first thought is the remote from Click. But then if you've just seen Click, you're not doing that. No, you're not, you're doing, not that. doing that. So, and I don't think you guys have seen the show, but I'm sure you're aware of it. But I'm using Rick's portal gun from Rick and Morty. He can just travel every conceivable reality ever. And you don't have to drive anywhere anymore either. So I think that's what I'm doing is Rick's portal gun. What about the Green Lantern's ring? It's a good one. But then you, I feel like you have to now take on a life of being a vigilante and protecting the world. See, I always thought to myself, man, if Superman was just selfish, he could just be awesome. I like football. Maybe uh, <laughs> yeah. the Green Ranger's whistle to take out the Godzilla uh, Megazord from the ocean. That's a great one. <laughs> burr, 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 burr. Fucking the Megazord just comes out of the water for you. Um, I don't know the reference. Um, oh, you don't know the reference? I don't. Yeah. I don't. Oh man, the magic basketball from Looney Tunes. The secret sauce. This, no, no, that's just water, with the magic that the aliens steal from oh, Charles still, Barkley. Yeah, and all of the NBA players. And all the NBA players. That's a good one. <laughs> he compliments his own. That's a good one, right, guys? Like a master ball from Pokemon. Yeah, but where's the Pokemon at? If one comes with it. <laughs> Mewtwo? What Pokemon would you want? Mewtwo. Bonk. I mean, Charizard. Did you say bonk on Mewtwo? Hey, you even seen the Mewtwo build? No, show me. Jack's horny, man. <laughs> it is springtime. Jack gets extra horny in the spring. Yeah, yeah. It's, the weather's nice today. Yeah, have you guys seen the, the flowers outside, by the way? There's some, some blooming right now. Yeah? yeah it's got me horny. They say, like, when a girl has a Mewtwo build. <laughs> <laughs> I think Charizard would be sick, man. Yeah, but he was always so disobedient with Ash. That's Ash, though. Yeah, there's a lot of Charizards that don't. So what's your final answer? I don't know. I like all those. Everything we're kind of saying. I love the ray gun. I don't gonna, know what exactly you're using it for besides just killing people, but it would be such a great centerpiece in like your living room above like a fireplace. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's the ray gun. Another good gun ray one gun would be... Ray gun or the uh, Green Ranger whistle? The Green Ranger uh, flute. Is that what it is? I think so. Percussion. Another, yeah, it's from Power Rangers. Sideways. Another good gun one would be uh, Golden Eye. Golden Eye is Golden Gun. What am I thinking of? Yeah. The flute, you're doing this. It's... <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dagger, but he's playing it. Yeah. The Green, Ra Green Ranger's flute. That is so funny. And watch this motherfucker, dude. Then your Megazord just comes out. <laughs> that is so funny. Would you take like a Transformer? Like Bumblebee. Would be like Bumblebee would be a good pug. Yeah. Fuck, that's a good one. It was like one of JT that had it in the... There's a SpongeBob one like the Magic Conch Shell. He'd want that bullshit. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, but I know that's a... Look up the Magic Conch Shell. Give JP the Magic Conch Shell. Five minute videos playing. <laughs> yeah. Will you stop this programming so you can watch five minutes of the magic conch shell? Uh so the teleports the so, I don't know if that's from SpongeBob, so there might be multiple lores of the magic conch, but teleports the player to the Jesus ocean. So pissed that we're butchering this. <laughs> He's so mad right now. He's on that damn cruise of spotty wi-fi getting mad i'm trying to see when he gets uh himself in there on the wave he's filming his boys hitting the wave oh yeah the flow board yeah uh, jp athletic like that he had himself number one i think when he did well you guys all did the pot that podcast we all had each other number one yeah actually i didn't i was on has everybody officially done that podcast yeah. except yeah. us yeah, coop. coop and y'all we got to get on it, man. Do we? Yeah, I think I thought so. you and I had an, uh, a verbal agreement about that show. Yeah, but it seems like if they're getting everybody, you might as well just jump on in for the boys. What's the name of the show? Two Pennies and a Dime? <laughs> Two Dimes and a Token. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll do the show. Yeah, I'm not saying like we have to have some verbal Two agreement. Two Dimes and a Token. Right? If you guys are watching <laughs> this, we'll do your show now. Yeah, we wow. might as well jump they're on the show. They're going to lose their goddamn mind. We'll do your show. Fuck it. 
I wonder if they want us together or separate. I'm sure. I don't think there's any way possible. I'd say separate. Yeah. I mean, they did everybody else separate. Yeah, that's true. Really air it out on two dimes and a token. How we really feel. Yeah. Really get down to the nitty gritty. No question. They're gonna ask us who's most most athletic. Yeah, I got my list. Well, All right. Hopefully, I've uh, done enough recently. <laughs> Are we solid, boys? Are we ready to get into Troy Polamalu? Yeah. Well, tell them what they can look forward to going into the show. Football porn. Troy Polamalu is absolutely everything and more. He talks about the strategy within the strategy of jumping over the line of scrimmage and how too much strategizing. He, he had to learn that he just had to go off of instinct. Can't overthink it. But the way he described wanting to be the best safety, the guys that he watched, breaking down film, the whole game within the game of football is truly football porn. And it exactly it is exactly what you want to hear about from somebody like Troy Palomalu. And he even gives like, you know, he kind of talks as much about like what he did to become who he was and how much effort was actually put into it, like practical things that he did, like staying up late, like even just obsessing over YouTube videos and watching other players and what, the, what wrinkle they would have in their game and how he would implement it into his when he would fuck up and have to talk to the coaches on the sideline about it, about why he was making that decision, how the steel, the Steelers were the Steelers back when they won the Super Bowl. Um, what else did he kind of talk about? He talks about even being a dad now, and he's still kind of that same guy where mm. he's on Instagram looking up, you know, dads who he he's like fond of. He's like, okay, this seems like they do it the right way. Or like, what do they do? Like, he very much has that student approach and curiosity to everything. And he was fucking awesome i hate that it was only 30 minutes long about 30 minutes long but he had the we had him at super bowl week and he was jumping around everywhere kind of like doing a thing for doritos i believe and Lays. uh frito lay frito lay frito lay and and so we didn't get him as long as but he did say he would come back on the bus he said he'd come back on to me it was very interesting how somebody who was so consumed by the game of football when he stepped away from the game he is fully immersed he is out on football he doesn't really follow like when we when he first walked in before he started shooting, he was like, I'm a little nervous. And I was like, why? He's like, I don't follow ball. I don't, you know, I don't really yeah. talk about ball a whole lot. I was like, dude, we're going to talk about the glory days and get to know you. Like, just knowing he, that seemed yeah. like he was like, okay, good. Because he thought he was going to have to break down film or something like that. And he obviously wasn't extremely familiar with our show, but it was awesome, dude. Guy is an absolute legend. His process, too, just talking about guys, I thought was one of the cooler things. Yeah. Stories about Dick LeBeau. There's a, I'll let you guys listen to the show, but there was a thing that Dick used to do with the Titans that he did every single year. And he knew this whole story verbatim. And it was, it was very cool when, he, uh, and it's obviously started with the Steelers. So that was awesome. Before we get in that episode, let's talk about uh, cars.com. Cars.com is a leading digital marketplace that connects car shoppers with their perfect car, celebrating 25 years of helping shoppers research, find inventory, finance, and sell cars. Wherever life takes you next, whoever you're looking to be, there's a car for that on cars.com. Up to 50,000 cars are added daily to cars.com. Shop over 2 million cars for 2 million possibilities. Find your next possibility on cars.com. Where to next? Where you're going next? This episode with Troy Palomalo. Enjoy. Big hugs and tiny kisses. Welcome to Bustin' with the Boys. We have an absolute legend with us, Troy Palomalu. Man, it is it is an honor to have you. Um, Let's give him a round of applause. Yeah. Real quick. yeah. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> Outstanding. Obviously here on behalf of Frito Lays. Right? Frito Lays? Yeah, Lays Frito. Frito Lay. Um, cool Ranch. Cool, cool Ranch, ranch. <laughs> Doritos, wherever yeah. the fun wants to take you, it is Frito Lay. Mm. Right before the pod, I was kind of asking him, like, uh, so what, like, what have you been up to? Like, you, you've always done a very good job of staying under the radar. And he was getting into uh, his two boys, 15 and 13. Uh, they're starting to get in the thick of it with sports. And and uh, what I wanted to ask is, what's it like being like a, uh, you know, being like one of those sport fathers, being those sport dads, like navigating that? You're talking about teaching them hard work and everything else. Well, I, to tell you the truth, like once sports are over with and, you know, like you get into the stands, you become no different than any other dad. That's what I realized. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, first of all, for my children, they don't give a, they don't care what you, what I say, whether it's about football or not. <laughs> really? Um, secondly is I don't like, you know, the crazy sports dad thing is, is I've embodied that completely. I've tried my best not to be that person. So it's, it's pretty funny. Um. Um, I've been all that. I've been the sport dad. I've been the coach. I've been all that. And that's that's kind of been my experience since this football, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We had Ed McCaffrey on here. 
he's talking about obviously his son Christian. He's playing in the Super Bowl and all that. Mm -hmm. And Christian was on last year talking about all the crazy things his dad would do during the recruiting process, putting weights in his socks so he weighed more. <laughs> IV during in the middle yeah. of school, pick him up for a night right. game, get an IV. Yeah. He went to a private school and he had to wear jeans, and his dad be like, "Jeans a little heavy for game day, huh?" Like <laughs> kind of that mentality. Do you catch yourself like obviously having the success you did in the NFL, That's and funny. you see your young boys no like soda. playing? Yeah, no soda, no carbonation. You don't yeah. want that in the belly. Yeah. yeah, like you see your your young boys like starting their process. Yeah. Is, do you ever catch yourself being like, if you know, hey, sleep, routine, diet, all that? Because, like, when, I mean, all men didn't play in the league, but, you know, we, yeah. we just kind of ate whatever, right? It was high right. school. You kind of just figured it out as yeah. you went. But you having that knowledge, like, have you tried to put that on your kids at all? Yeah, but then you, but the, but then you evolve towards doing what's most optimal for your body and for mm -hmm. your health. Yeah, it's kind of tough, to be honest with you. I, I'm geared. I'm geared very much type A, although I may not act that way, you know, yeah. so I, I am very regimented in, law, in how I view things and how I do things. So funny enough is, yeah, absolutely. I, I watched that Ed McCaffrey, um, like his, his inside the NFL and everything that he'd done. Mm. That's how obsessed I am. I, I had study other fathers to make sure like, <laughs> how can I be a sports dad? So aside from that, you know, a, a very infamous father and who I think is unfortunately uh, characterized that way, uh, Marv Marinovich was my trainer. Mm -hmm. So he was kind of like seen as the ultimate sports dad and you know, bestowing all of his knowledge on his son. Um, so yeah, there is a certain balance there. Um, absolutely. But, uh, without a doubt, you know, there, as you know, and you learn in the, in, in the NFL is it's always the, the little things, you know, everybody does the big things. It's always the little things and the accumulation, those little things that kind of make the, the, the big difference, mm -hmm. um, in those inches that are millimeters that you try to gain throughout the sport. And uh, for my son, uh, it's 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 a little bit of that. You know, I'm not telling him, you know, wear jeans or not wear jeans or any right, of that sort of stuff. Without tackles. a doubt, I tell him how important sleep is, how important height. I, I'm saying this for all the other kids out there is, you know, the most important thing for kids and for any athlete is sleep, hydration, and then the diet, and yeah. then the therapy, and then the training. So the things that are under your control are the sleep, the diet, you know, and the hydration. So that's the one thing that I, that I am very, you know, strict on is like, no, man, you got to hydrate. If you want to play two sports, you want to play five sports, whatever the case is, like these things are really important. Mm -hmm. So I am pretty strict about some of those things. Are they both, uh, are they both very different? Is one more type A is one more like you that you feel like, okay, I can coach him this way and coach the other one this way. Oh yeah, absolutely. They're, they're exact opposite. One's very geared towards, uh, trying to please everybody. And one of them is very much about himself. Yeah. <laughs> or, or either one, or do, they, do they understand? I'm sure they do, but finding like that interest of like, Oh my, my dad played at this high level. He's this hall of fame guy. Like the things he says, I'm more of a sponger. Is it very much that, uh, you know, since you're the dad, one year out the other at times, and then their coach says something like, I've been trying to tell you this the whole time. To be honest, I, I joke that my kids are like that, but they aren't. They, they're very, they're, I'm very blessed. They, they listen really well. Um, they do uh, you look up old highlights and things like that. But, um, you know, they, I, I'm very fortunate. Again, we have a, re a very great relationship with my two boys. Do you love looking back at USC and, 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 and watching that hit you put on, oh boy, what was it, on special teams? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't even know what you're talking about, man. Yeah. Funny enough, funny enough, my, uh, on that hit, it was Aaron Lockett. Yeah, it was a terror. It was, it was an ill-timed hit. Um, but what I always tell people is that was the third one. Mm -hmm. The two before that were perfectly timed. So if you were to watch the whole game, you would have <laughs> saw the two before yeah. that. But... Um, uh, my wife was like, uh, I had met her at that time right before, and she was like, man, that guy's a cheap player. I hope I never meet that guy. I'd say something terrible to him. I'm like, yeah, uh, I wouldn't want to meet him either. He's a piece of crap, that guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she later found out it was obviously me, but... <laughs> Yeah, That's so funny. The, uh, yeah. With, with the kids, like, sticking on that for just one more, like, was there ever a point in your life as your kids get older, they discover, they go to school, their kids are talking about, uh, your, your kids' friends are talking about their, their dad? And like tempering those expectations as they kind of go into sports, like, hey, you don't have to, like, the goal is not to like achieve what I did. It's like to be the best version of yourself. Did you ever have, like, were they ever struggling with that or anything? 
Yeah, I think naturally they they struggle. I mean, my son plays football. They both they both will be playing tackle football. So I think naturally they're going to deal with that. And I mean, you guys have been in this all. We've been all the same circles. You know, these things aren't to an advantage to anybody. Right. <laughs> you know, in our circle. Yeah. But I, I I I tell them to embrace that. You know, that's only going to harden them, make them even better. You know, in, in a lot of ways. And also is is. You know, I've I've also been on the other side of where I've always been the jealous athlete, always trying to knock down the who who's ever on top, and mm -hmm. and um, you know there was a lot of bad characteristics that I had growing up because of that. So you know, I try to coach my my son like how to deal with people that have similar character of how I was. You know, growing up very jealous, very competitive, very alpha type. Um, so what what they do have is they have you know somebody who's got a, a lot of life experience you know um, mm -hmm. that's able to impart a lot of knowledge and 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 to their credit they're great listeners. We interrupt this episode to bring you Nutrafol. Guys, we don't have to choose between hair growth and our health. Oh shit! Hey, your boy is on this. You are? Yeah, your boy has been on this for a month and a half now. Uh, Charo actually put me on it. She does a lot of their stuff for. Uh, on the female side of their products. Hold on now. Your Nutrafol's drug-free whole body Hold approach on, promotes hair growth from within. No compromises, just better hair. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement brand with over 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding. Nutrafol's hair growth supplements are physician formulated using 100% drug-free ingredients. Their patented technology provides, provides consistent, reliable results without compromising your sex life. While many supplements rely solely on ingredient studies, Nutrafol clinically tests final formulations to ensure their uh, efficacy. In a clinical study, 84% of men showed improvement in their hair after six months taking Nutrafol men's hair growth supplements. Taking their hair wellness quiz on Nutrafol.com forward slash men. Again, take their wellness quiz on Nutrafol.com forward slash men for a personalized hair health plan based on your specific root causes. With Nutrafol, building a hair growth routine is simple. Purchase online, no prescription or doctor visits required or necessary. Free, strip, free shipping and automated deliveries ensure you'll never miss a day. See results within three to six months. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair for a limited time. Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter promo code BUSSIN. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men, and enter promo code BUSSIN. Nutrafol.com slash men, promo code BUSSIN. This is awesome. Your boy's on it. I can't wait to see. Now I'm going to have to take a before and after for, for the people since they're advertising with the boys right now. Back to the episode. Nutrafol.com. Who are some of those safeties that you were jealous of? Oh, all of them, to be honest with you. Yeah. But um, are there a couple, had, or is there one that you're just like? So every year, I, every year, I I watched five safeties, and I would literally watch every single one of their plays, and I would make a highlight tape and a low light tape of all of them. So that's what I did throughout my whole career. Ed was somebody I watched every I would watch every single one of his plays um, so obviously Ed is somebody who I admired but there's a bunch of guys like Donovan Darius Bob Sanders a lot of guys that don't get a lot of credit that you know were Hall of Fame type caliber players that that didn't have length and, and to be very frank man I was in the most beautiful situation in Pittsburgh I had a Hall of Fame defensive coordinator Hall of Fame head coach man you could put any of these players in my position they would have been just as successful as I am I I, I studied I was obsessed with the game. I, I, I broke down safeties in this way and even cornerbacks in this way. So um, I don't say these things humbly. I, I, I see, I, I study these guys. I studied everything about them. You know, I, I studied fathers. I studied McCaffrey. I studied <laughs> Marina. I, I'm telling you. So these sort of things aren't, aren't like, that's obviously who I am and maybe a part of my success as a football player. But um, it's, it's, it's just who I am. It's mm -hmm. the things that, of how I've, I view, you know, trying to be a father or, or trying to help train athletes or whatever the case is. Were you very, were, was all this, this, uh, uh, student of the preparation, did you have all this in USC and it helped carry you into the league or did it mm. obviously develops over time, but did yeah. you kind of have that sense of urgency and preparation at college? No, I, 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 I absolutely developed it over time. And what I did is I studied the greats. Like if, if anybody 
at this period of time knows like saw how Ed Reed how much he talked about how important film was and he didn't listen to that you know what I mean like this he was talking in college about this stuff and I'm listening to him in college and so so like all of these sort of things became habits for me you know you hear here you hear here and there about what Tom Brady is doing and all these guys about health wellness longevity and you know how to keep a sharper edge and you know, you hear about how other athletes, Rob, you know, like Gilbert Arenas is talking about how he watched Kobe Bryant play and how he learned from these guys. And honestly, it's very simple in that way. You know, you got to have a student mindset uh, in the sport. You nothing. You're not going to be original in anything. There's a lot of great players that have done a lot of great things. And 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 you guys have walked in these shoes it's no secret man it's it's sacrifice it's grit it's hard work it's no special talent that anybody else has so you know as, as long that to me is, is it was my mindset so that's why I, I learned from guys like ed guys like donovan darius um a, a lot of safeties that i studied um that aren't uh, quite uh, you know very famous out there mm-hmm. you, uh, when you were talking about like hall of fame d coordinators dick lebeau he was with the tennessee titans for a year and he, this is a guy who like walks into a room and you're like, holy shit, dude, that's Dick that's LeBeau. Dick LeBeau. Yeah. And he's a legend. And there's so many things that we went and played the Steelers on Thursday Night Football. We got destroyed. It was like, it was AB catching the ball <laughs> in the back of his head. It was just an absolute, they mollywopped us. But like he brought all these other players in, these Hall of Fame dudes. Like, um, is it Kessel, Kiesel? Yep. He bought him and a bunch of other guys and they, they had conversations with us. But one of the things they always would tell amazing stories about Dick and like uh, there was one time for Christmas, like right around Christmas time, mm-hmm. we'd have a team meeting. And I don't know if he did this with you guys, oh, but yeah. he sat and he read the night before Christmas in front of the whole team. No, he didn't read, he didn't it. read it. He didn't he read, didn't read it. it. Yeah. He recited it. He recited it. the entire book or story like verbatim. And so yeah. like, are there any like uh, some Dick Lebeau-isms that maybe the world well, doesn't know about as much? Well, for, to, to, to extend on that story, though, this is something he did every year. Mm-hmm. So it was like a tradition on the, the, the last game before Christmas. And to me, I always look forward to that every year because, I mean, you experience it. You understand, like, the level of, like, you kind of look around and like, dang, man, like, this guy's reciting the whole poem. He writes an intro and, uh, you know, an intro to it that he wrote himself that, like, is perfectly in line with the entire poem. And then you, to me, what I would love to, what I loved at those moments, I would look around at all the younger guys. And then they, that's when they like would really start to say, man, I'm part of something special and very different. Like they don't do this normally at at different, at, at, you know, in the NFL. So to me, that was always really special uh, thing that he would always do. In fact, even to this day on the night before Christmas, I'll pull up the video on YouTube and my my family will watch it as Mm -hmm. well. Um, But Kosa Bo is, he's, I mean, you experienced him for a year, but in, in my career, he was everything to me. I mean, he was came in my second year, and we we left the Steelers together. Um, man, every every day was like a like a like a like a like a there was like a wise sage moment with him. It was like, whoa, that was profound. Like, thank you for that. You know, yeah. like it was just like every day was that, and and you don't get that from coaches that you like. You know what I mean? Like coaches, you get different type of wisdom from. He got gave like sage advice. Mm-hmm. So um, and it came like at, at like like he, he was never a yeller. He was never a cusser, mm-hmm. you know. But um, so it was it just came like in a very real sense. And, and especially the fact that he's a Hall of Fame player. You know, the funny things that he would always do is like he'd come to DB line. He just walked out. He'd, he'd go 12. 15, 27, um, 55. He's like, ah, all of you guys don't amount to the amount of interceptions that I have. (laughs) (laughs) You would literally just go like that and be like, yep, that's 55. All you guys combined, 63 over here. Like, (laughs) so yeah, he was, um, he was awesome. Was his, was the beauty of his coaching, the consistency, consistency, like having him from a year two till when you finished, did he ever kind of waver in Never. his approach? Oh, absolutely, absolutely not. But also, like, you know, I, he, I think that's one thing is his, his consistency. But, like, I, I, I don't know. Like, it wasn't like he changed his message. It got stale. Mm-hmm. None, it never did that. But he, he always kept us excited and happy. I don't know why. It was just that, that level of respect that we had for him. Such a unique like way to go about things. So I feel like the coaching world, at least what we grew up in, was like more yelling, more intensity. 
And there was like such a calmness about oh, yeah. him. Everywhere he walked, he'd come see you. he remember everybody's name, tap you on the shoulder as you left. And oh, even yeah. a gentle tap on the shoulder, you're like, man, we had a moment. I feel like he, the he, first he, time you experience somebody like that too, you're just thinking like, okay, there's another way that goes about it. I'm kind of receptive to this yeah. style. <laughs> like he, he's, he like told me one day, he's like, uh, he's like he, he just, for the heck of it, he went like 400 days eating a cheeseburger every day. Mm -hmm. So then he tried to do something like that with like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, he's just like, change of a cheeseburger. Yeah, like, yeah. All right, goes yeah. Like, <laughs> but yeah. We interrupt this ep episode to bring you Body Armor Zero. This episode, again, the brand new zero sugar sports drink from our friends at Body Armor provides real hydration with no artificial sweeteners, flavors, or dyes. Whether you're looking to stay hydrated or recovering from a long weekend, Body Armor Zero Sugar has got you covered with great tasting flavors like fruit punch and lemon lime. They're a huge partner of Barstool. We love Body Armor Zero Sugar. They even got the PMT guys to bear it all under in their new commercial, so go check that out. Body Armor Zero Sugar is available in stores nationwide. Head on over to Body Armor, uh, their store on Amazon, and get yours today. Body Armor, the sports drink of the world. I'm so fascinated with uh, the way you were talking about your preparation and being kind of obsessed with like watching everybody else and kind of adding those parts of the game. I know we talk about doing things like that and, and just that 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 level of of detail. Could you you have your style of play of like being up on the line of scrimmage, rolling to the middle of the field, jumping over uh, the line of scrimmage, like doing all these like unique things and uh was there a time because i feel like when you're a player and you want to go make a play right coach coach will be in the film room like yeah you make the decision you better make a play or it wouldn't work out yep. like was there a, a time where you're studying these other guys and you're thinking okay ed reed just did this or this this guy just happened like i'm gonna start adding this wrinkle to my book oh, yeah. and then when that moment did happen you're like okay the leash of palomalo gets longer because like hey he's going out here and making these plays so oh yeah there's there's absolutely a lot of things for Ed in particular that he would do that I'm like, oh man, I need to incorporate that. And and funny thing is, that's what I would use scout team for. To be honest with you, I was like, oh, I want to I want to do scout team. I want to do scout team because I'm like, oh well, you know, I want to try some of the things I've seen how some of these other safeties do. You know, one thing that that I try to tell people about football is it's a it's it's a hard sport to get really good at in a sense because. We spend our off season working out. So like the mentality is every off season, the only way that we can get better is to get bigger, stronger, or faster. Yeah. You know, it's not get better at our skill development. So for me, I, I realized that man, in order for as this for a safety to become better, I need to get more reps at practice. So I need to like see more. I need to just con continue to see it. So that's where that's where I really started to change my practice habits to like get more reps on the field so that I could I could see um, see more um, I actually learned that from from a book of the 10,000 hours book I forget but outliers? yeah outliers mm -hmm. and just talking about like that maximize that rep so I was like man I need to maximize reps on the field so whenever I'd go and do scout team uh, that's where I was maximize the reps but then I would also incorporate the things that I saw on film like oh man Ed this guy's cover one this way to make it look like cover six so he baited that front side post that they wouldn't co throw in cover three, but in, they would throw in cover six. You know, like he would do these genius type things like, oh, man, and maybe, oh, they call cover one. Hey, let's make it look like six. And, you know, these sort of things that you could practice. Um, and Ryan would be out there or Chris Hope, you know, the, uh, the other safety would be out there. So we'd be, you know, practicing these guys together. The other thing was at Pittsburgh, the unique thing that I had as a role was, my rookie year, they made me play safety. They made me play safety, both safeties, which were two different positions at the time, and then both nickel and the dime, so and cornerback. So I was end up being like the, the the big safety on corner. So I literally played almost every position on defense, and then on, on sometimes on three man rushes, I'd be the fourth rusher. So I could run a, run a text. I can run an X game with some with with the with the DN. So you could literally say I played every position. What was really cool about that, it, what terrible about that was I had to learn them all, which was terrible because my whole rookie year I gave up, I, I promised you, I gave up a touchdown a game. And it was, I, I'm, I'm serious. What's funny about that is my second year, if any rookie would have come in and done that, I would have been like, get him out of the game. Yeah, like yeah, like yeah. my standard had been crazy different. But anyway, um, 
when you look at an offense and then you see, hey, man, they, they attack you in this way, and I'm a safety, I'm like, I play every position. I know what everybody's doing. If I know the ball's going there, coach, I'm just going to switch with him. I'm going to say, all right, you know, linebacker, you play safety. I'm going to play linebacker because I know if, I, if, if you, you play it right, but I know the play. I'm gonna play. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm gonna blow it up. Yeah. So for me, it was that's 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 kind of where I started really develop. I just started seeing man. I, I'm knowing everybody's role, and if I know that the ball's gonna go there, I'm just gonna switch positions with him. So you would do that in real time in the game. In real time in the game. This one, there wouldn't be a practice, and you'd be like, okay. I have a really good inkling I that this is gonna getting, happen. I started getting smart enough to know that when I would do this in practice, the coaches would say you can't do that. I'm like, all right, I'll just wait for the game to do that. So then during the games, I'm like, oh. But, you know, I'm not talking about – I'm also giving up blitzes. I'm also saying, hey, James, you'd be better in this this blitz than I am because I know you're going to get the running back. I won't, I'll won't. i get the running back too, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're James. So, like, the same thing. So, like, the same thing, you know. Like, I know I'm going to get the tight end. Let's switch positions because I'll rush a D-gap. You rush, you rush contain because I'll get the tackle. You get the tight end. So, like, you know, these little nuances that you can make everybody better. Everybody doesn't think, like, oh, well, why would you switch to blitz? Like, are you kidding me? James versus the tight end and me versus the tackle. Of course I'm going to lose. He's going to win 100% of the time. Yeah. So that, that's, that's what, what, what started to make our defense really roll together. And what started to hurt our defense late in my career is you get rookies out there. I'm like, hey, man, you got curl the flat. He's like, what's curl the flat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? Working together. Yeah. <laughs> he gave up a touchdown, Troy. Yeah. You can't be doing that. I'm like, oh, man. We interrupt this episode to bring you Verizon. Verizon, you already know that Verizon is the network America relies on. But did you know that you can get the network you want for your... Mitch, Mitch, all good? Uh, did, but did you know you can get the network, get the network you want for your phone and your home, get Verizon for both mobile and home and save. So you can make sure whatever, whatever it is you're following this year's Oscar movies, the hockey playoffs, the sharps football draft projections. It's all good, whether you're at home or not at home. And when you switch and get a deal on the iPhone 15 pro iPad and Apple watch SE, the network you want on the tech you love. Simply better together only on Verizon. Visit your local Verizon store to shop or learn more. Back to the episode. Do you remember <laughs> the first play where that worked out, where you just kind of went out of the box and, and, and took a shot and it happened to work well to where it's like, okay. You know, it, it was more or less that happens in like coverage. Um, you know, uh, coaches would be yelling at me, hey, it's cover two, it's cover two, it's cover two, you should be in the half. And I'm showing cover three. But I'm telling the corner, hey, you got the half. I'm going to take the flat. So I'm showing cover three the whole time. And coach is yelling at the side, hey, hey, you got to be back. You got to be back. And I'm like trying to ignore him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, I'll get to the side. I'm like, coach, I just inverted with the corner. I let him play the half. Mm -hmm. I played the, 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 you know, I just want to give the quarterback a different look. They've been calling this and cover three every time. So those little things is, is what Coach LeBeau started to allow us. Like, yeah, man, here's the call. Make it right. You know what I mean? Like just giving us that level of flexibility in a lot of ways. We we're talking about how Coach Tomlin does too. How long did it take for Coach LeBeau to be like, all right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, I understand. There's, there's, there's going to be a point where you're supposed to be in cover two, but you're showing cover three and you go to the sideline and it's like, you can't do that. <laughs> like, how many times did it work? How many times did it have to work before they were like, maybe he's on to something? Like, maybe, <laughs> like, like, let Troy Listen, do I'm his a, thing. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of a politician too. You know, like I, <laughs> I, I, I would tell him, you told me this though. If you tell me it's a hundred percent run, then I'm going to play 100% run. Like, don't, don't tell me it's going to be something that it's not. And that's what I, I, I try to tell the players. Like, just don't study film to study film. You know, if Ed taught us anything, man, it's like you make plays studying film. Yeah. Believe what you see is what he would always say. I'm like, all right, I'll believe what I see. Um, so all of these, like, anyway, yeah. It's like for all the kids out there listening, make sure you understand your install first, know what yeah. to do, know how to do it. Mm -hmm. But no, that is, it's just cool like hearing those stories. Like I remember I got to play with uh, Ryan Clark in his last year when he was in Washington and I was starting to come into the huddle and get some play and everything else. And Ryan at practice, like he was somebody that was such a student of the game and uh, you'd be out of practice and you know how it is. It's like you want to be a situational master and like it, whatever down and distance it was, you'd hear Ryan back there chirping like how uh, pivotal was it 
I'm sure that's what made your defense great. Everybody having that level of standard of kind of knowing every situation, know how to talk about it before, as the huddle breaks, mm -hmm. as the formation's coming out, yeah. uh, emotion happening. But uh, how beneficial was it to have like a back end like that and somebody next uh, to you like Ryan Clark? It's everything. It's, I mean, it's absolutely everything. And, and it may not be like that in every organization, but it's absolutely everything to me and everything to our defense. Because um, the level of trust and exposure that we would con consistently put each other in is, um, you know, it takes a lot of, co it takes a lot of like cohesiveness to do that. I mean, when we do some of this manipulation on the back end, you have to understand you're completely exposing somebody else. Oftentimes that was Ike, you know, like, hey, Ike, we're doing this over here. Sorry, your man to man covers zero with their Chad Ochocinco or Brandon Marshall, yeah, or, you know. Yeah. With their, so we were always like we, we that was the only reason why we were allowed to do what we do is because, you know, Ryan's communicating Ike cornerback Brian McFadden their cover zero oftentimes where you know we want to do some cowboy type stuff um, but they held they hold their own they're the reason why we were you know as successful as we were man uh, Mike Tomlin just uh, I was had the opportunity he coached me at the Pro Bowl in 2016 and just being around him and his presence was very like Dick LeBeau-esque yeah like, just more of a calming more like positive and confident can you just like elaborate on him and his legacy as a Steelers head coach Man, I, I really enjoyed his podcast with Ryan. He, mm. Ryan Clark did a podcast with him, and I was just like, man, I, I'm so happy people get to see Coach Tomlin, like mm. like who he really is, um, because he's he's not he, he that's who he is. That's who he is as a coach. You know what I mean? Like I guess I guess maybe like press conference, like the, it's like the the he's like the Bill Belichick in the press conference. Right, you know, yeah. like completely opposite. Right. But man, I, it, it was really cool to see that level of of, of who he is. Because when I, I mean he was 34 when I when, when he came to coach the Steelers. I mean it's it's amazing that he was that young. And aside from that, that he had a family and had young children. So like these kids that grew up in the locker room. Now now that you like kind of see him. So, I don't know. It's, he's an amazing uh, father, uh, co coach. I mean, later in my career, he would we would have DB sessions. I learned so much from him about protection, routes based on protections, and all these different things. Um, so he's incredible. I actually is so fortunate to have him, Coach Cower, Dick LeBeau. That's why uh, that's why I, I say humbly, but I say in, in all sincerity, man, you put anybody in my position, man. These guys are you, you can't do nothing but be a Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. to be very frank with you. Man. How was it that I know and we're getting the, the wrap up signal, but I, I have to ask, like, how sick is it knowing that you pulled off all those line of scrimmage plays? <laughs> I mean, getting you getting the watch back, like diving over the line of scrimmage, timing up snaps, like that's pretty badass. Because if it didn't work, <laughs> yeah. you yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's called the Troy Paul. Yeah. You know what's funny is, is, is it didn't work sometimes, but <laughs> you know, it goes back to the outliers thing. Mm. What I realized is that a safety needs to see everything, and that means like. Not only the formation, not only the personnel, but like how they break the huddle. Mm -hmm. And you know this, you know the difference between zero, silent count, or on two, and the urgency that an offensive lineman comes to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. when it's on zero, man, they're gonna get up there and then they get ready. Or if you know these sort of, sort of game situations. So the funny thing about it is that's where I started to develop this because I was like, man, everybody breaks the the line very differently. When offensive line they come, it's on two, they break with different sense of urgency than when it's quick snap or silent count. And when you start to see that, you also see it when they run back to the huddle. So I would always tell people, watch the full length of the play, as in like how long the call it takes to make the call, how long it takes for them to run to the line. And all these things mean something. Um, so uh, the funny thing is, when it started to happen, I say started to happen, is I was just reacting. I had never thought about it. I was just like, oh, jumping, and then to doing it. I'm like, oh, man. Oh, wow, that worked. It wasn't until I was like, okay, it's this game situation. Oh, you got you to gotta jump it. And then that's when I would actually jump off sides. So yeah. I started to really understand how I was as an athlete, that I'm like, okay, you have to overly prepare so that you can just be instinctual and be free rather than like be a student out there that's always like, you know what I mean? I really mm -hmm. just had to go out there and be free. So when I did jump, you know, and blitz and do those sort of things, man, it was, I swear to you, pure instinct. It was just like 
afterwards I make the plane like, oh man, it was like a it was a crazy ride. But it wasn't when I was thinking. That's when I would jump off sides yeah. and do it wrongly. So it yeah. was funny. Well, I know we got to get yeah, you out of here, yeah, but yeah. one, one, one last. This is it. This is it right now. <laughs> like uh, obviously, like as you story. as you became more famous and more established as a player and all that, like the hair was always a thing that people were like, "That's how we know it's Troy Polamalu." <laughs> Did it ever get to the point for you where you're like, "I literally can't change his look up ever because this is this is me now." Um, like I'm a mustache okay. guy. I can oh, never, yeah, change, yeah. never <laughs> shave my mustache. You Are know? you saying you can never say shit? Shave, shave? <laughs> to me, this is my identity now. Yeah. Like, I love, it. I love it so much. But there's got to be a point where, you're like, you know, maybe you wake up and you have a little bed head. You're like, man, it'd be so much easier if I just kind of bicked it and let it hey, run a little bit. A better way to put it is, it was always part of my identity before. Yeah. So it wasn't like it's something that I had to hold on to. Mm -hmm. So it was more or less like it was always my identity before I even had it. Um, and it was like it was a specific identity. You know, like my my mother-in-law who's a classic as a classicist very a greek classicist um would always say all the greatest warriors through all time had long hair you know you talk about samurais native americans ancient hebrews to you know all of them polynesian they all had long hair so i was like oh okay i like that um i Probably they probably had mustaches too though. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's going on. Long hair and mustache. Yeah, well, I had the mustache. mustache. Yeah. Troy, yeah. thanks so much, man. Yeah, this we is, appreciate you, man. This uh, is thank awesome. You guys. This thank is you. awesome, yeah. man. It's, it's been great having you. Make sure to subscribe, comment. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get a photo? Yeah. yeah.